I got to hype this intro music. Welcome to another episode of Pierre's Panic Room. You know how we do. We got the flashy guests, and this is no different this week right here. Thank you all for supporting it. Don't forget to hit the notification bell or the, um, what's that other thing called? <laughs> notification bell, whatever, all that shit. Just, just hit some stuff to, to join, okay? You know, just follow this nigga, okay? And then we've been doing the show long enough. This damn near about the 80th show, y'all. So I thank y'all for those who supported, who knew. Come on, welcome me now. I do it the way I do it, all right? I don't do it like no, no other. Ep- I ain't, look, I'm stuttering. I don't do it like other places do it. So we do it the way I do it on here, y'all. And I thank y'all for supporting it. And thank y'all for when I'm on the streets. Y'all say, yo, I love the panic room, man. Because I love you for watching it. All right? So here it goes. You know how we do. We got to read some, some comments my crew gets together for other previous episodes. And I just read whatever they write. So here we go. I haven't had a chance to look at them. So sometimes y'all be like, man, you be reading all wrong. Man, damn y'all. All right, here we go. This is from, <laughs> this is from the, the Tom Morris Jr., the guy from the um, America's Most Wanted show, man. This is from uh, user dash, well, okay, Y-O-1-V-Q-M-Q-6-M. But just get him from regular shit. All right, not them. All right, this is the Busy Bone show about Busy Bone. He said, Busy was kidnapped, and I remember that as a child. Yeah, he talks about how Busy, how busy was uh, kidnapped, and uh, he, went talk to, he went to talk to the people in America's Most Wanted, wanted to talk about it, about exploiting kids and so forth. Dope episode, dope clip. Check it out. Um, my man Tom Morris Jr., the brother that was on uh, America's Most Wanted as far as a guest. I mean, a host, I mean. All right, another one. This is from the Head Crack episode. This was funny, too. It was a crazy one. He's talking about the bidet. Remember me talk about the bidet? This is from The C Bus. Okay, now I'm really dead. Did he just compare a butter mint to a bidet? Yeah, he did do that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, a bidet, I don't know if y'all know bidets are. I kind of learned more about it. It's where you sit down and let water hit that ass. Damn. I think they might start that in Atlanta. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't sat on a bidet yet, but my girl, uh, Queen, the camera girl, she sits on them all the time. Uh, um, his name is Bidet, okay? He's African. All right, so we're going with that. This is from the Tony Terry episode. Susan Perkins 9236 says, Great interview, Pierre. Uh, Tony Terry, oh, great interview with Tony Terry. Pierre, you always ask the real, the real, real question, I guess? The real questions to get your guests to reveal interesting facts about themselves, and you do it with humor. Appreciate that, Susan Perkins. Uh, shout out to you again for saying that. All right, well, this ain't gonna be no different. I got this brother, man. Um, you know, I, I was seeing him around Atlanta, and um, I actually had him on the show, not doing this one, but we did some snapping uh, competition, and he was one of the hosts. I didn't realize how funny he was, man. This is a funny cat, you know, just funny, just talking. I wonder if you're gonna be a comedian, since everybody else is gonna be doing comedy. This nigga probably be doing comedy soon, too. You know him, he's a legend. <laughs> Give it up. For the one and only Mr. Dave Hollister. I mean, yeah, uh, Tolliver. I mean, Tolliver. Yeah, Motherfuckers do that about, shit yeah, all the time. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Oh, don't worry about it. So, oh, uh, Tolliver. Uh, fuck it, same one. Just keep going. That nigga know who he is. <laughs> they do that shit all the Tolliver. time. Tolliver. I wonder if they told Dr. Dave Tolliver, Tolliver, Dave Hollister, yo, what's up, Dave Tolliver? Then they go back and tell him the same shit. You know, I don't know, man. You know, but I, you know, Dave is one of my favorites of all time. Of course, man. why wouldn't and, uh, he be? Dave Hollister is a bad dude, and you know, so it's a, you know, if, if you think I'm that great too, then you, know, you fuck are, it. brother. You know, I knew you now. I'm saying you, everybody. They you know, I, fuck, I know Dave Hollister. I had to say Hollister, nigga, because you know, when I told everybody you coming on, some people said, oh, "You got Dave Hollister." Right. Dave Hollister. I, 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 I was doing. A, uh, I was filling in for Lil G one time for this uh, this uh-huh. play, and this lady's uh-huh. like, "Oh my God, I, I I was I really wanted you to. I had this with you in mind for this part." Uh-huh. Long story short, I said, you know, I said, what, really? Because I'm, I'm, I'm tripping. I'm like, what the fuck, like, really? Like, but why did you get Lil G if you was looking for me? Right. She said, no, I wanted you, I wanted you. She said, oh, Mr. Hollister. I said, oh, I said, excuse me, my name is Dave Tolliver. Right, right. Oh, well, um, well, I'll send you your deposit tomorrow still. We still do show. I've never heard from the lady again. Really? Yeah, man. She it's wanted Hollister. Man, yeah. we're going to start back from the beginning. For those who don't know, he's from Men in Large, great group uh, in the 90s. Supposed to kick the ass in the 90s. But let's talk about how you came up. Uh, you're from Cleveland. Yeah, man. I didn't realize, you know, 
Well, the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is there. And people yeah. are like, why in Cleveland? Why in Cleveland? Shit, y'all done had some legends come out of Cleveland. Yeah. Just looking at some of these people. Uh, Bobby Womack. Yeah, man. Bootsy Collins. Yeah, man. Uh, the Dad's Band. Yeah, Skip. Uh, come on. Uh, John Legend. Mm -hmm. Bull Moose Jackson. Whoever that is. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? He came to Cleveland. He's like, he, he, <laughs> some, some of those he's a blues like man. He's a blues yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, Ohio, yeah, Marilyn yeah. Manson. Oh, yeah, for sure. I knew that. See? Ohio players, of course. Yeah, man. Uh, Isley Brothers, Nine OJ. Nine Inch Nails. Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Tracy Chapman. Come on, man. No wonder Cleveland got MC all that. Brains, Bone Thugs, Come and on. Harmony. I, yeah. I can go on. The list can go on. That's yeah. why the Hall of Fame is in, uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is in Cleveland. All right. So growing up, d describe your family structure. Mom in the house, dad in the house. What was, what was it like growing up? Uh, my was dad like? was a shitty guy. Okay. Uh, he, he was a shitty he was guy? very okay. abusive, man. He Damn. He used to beat the trash out of my mom, and then he would, he would whoop on me, too. So I grew up in that. And, uh, you know, uh, they, we stayed with my grandparents mm -hmm. at first, and so my grandfather was my hero. Then he passed away when I was like six, so I was like, ah. Damn. Yeah. But, but, but hold on, you say about getting whooped on. Let me tell you something funny. Oh, shit. Michael Jackson's father whooped on him and whooped yeah. him to the stars. Yeah, but you know, it's, 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 it's messed up when you see your mom getting beat like of that. Of course you know it what is. I'm saying? Like this dude would, he would do it like in front of her best, her friends right. and all kinds of stuff right. like yeah, that. Yeah, and yeah. then come and get me for nothing because he was out all night drugging and drinking and he didn't want nobody to disturb him. You know what I'm saying? My my sister was born with a club foot and so she was running, boo, 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 boo. Wow. Daddy, come here. I'm like, ah. It was like right, everybody right, hates right, Chris. Right, Time right. to be quiet, Dad. Come right, over right. from work. So it was like that, man. Uh, but it, it wasn't as torturous as you think, though, because, you know, my uncle, who, who was more like my, my father, my mm -hmm. mom's brother, he would, he would take me, and uh, he was a, a, a historical uh, legend in radio. His name was Lynn Tolliver, and he would take me, and he would get me out of there and get me places. And, and then when they moved out, they thought it would be better. When mom and dad moved out, I don't know why she stayed with him for so long, right, but right. when they moved out, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, they don't yeah, know how yeah. to yeah, pick a dick right. for nothing. So, uh, oh, damn, okay. There you go. <laughs> just real talk. You know what I'm saying? None okay. of my cousins and right. sisters know how to pick a dick. Wrong dick again. Right, right, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Right, so, uh, right, right. you know, they, they, would, uh, he, they got me out and started getting me into, you know, entertainment with the okay. radios. My, sure, sure. You know, my uncle was in, in uh, radio since like 69. My mom was a singer. Uh, she did like off-Broadway of Mahalia Jackson, worked for the government, but she sang in church. Uh, you know, right. just, okay. that's, that's what okay. it was like. It, it was cool, man. You okay. know what I mean? It was all right. Um, and uh, this is going back to, I'm not trying to hit it, but it's funny, um, no pun intended with this one, but about beating, you know, the kids <laughs> into success. No, Joe Jackson beat them into huge success. Yeah. My father beat me into my, mildly successful. Yeah. I was like three whippings away from being the shit. <laughs> you know, like, come on, Dad, you could hit me three more times, nigga. Right. I could have been, you know, the yeah. next Eddie Murphy. That nigga hit me just enough to be right here in the panic room. Yeah. Damn, Dad. Three short, three hits short. But no, you were a pretty much a star as a young age from six years old in the church. You grew up in the church, right? Mm -hmm. That's I remember hearing that. Starting off in the church. Right. About five and, did you, and you directed the choir. Was you the choir head at 14? And like uh, when I was like 12 or 13, I went from the I started directing the kids' choir, and then I went to the youth choir. And, you know, then from that, it was after that, it was over. When I was like 15, I, I, he got me, uh, my uncle slash dad. Got me in the radio. I worked for a station in Cleveland called WZAK, 93 right. FM. Yeah. Right, right, right. I mean, but how, how'd you get the name? The Black Pavarotti. So, you I know, see the black. For most of the, yeah. So most of the people, if, if you, you know who I am, you watch and tell, you know I've been, I was probably about two, 250 pounds heavier. Uh, heavier? So, yeah, heavier, nigga. Okay. Yeah. All right. Don't fuck around. You know. All right. All right. All right. Next you time. Know, yeah. Yeah. We, we fit in the chair now, nigga. Yeah, yeah, Last yeah, time yeah. I'll be yeah. sticking out this motherfucker. Nigga, we'd order a couch. Yeah. 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 shit. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> Black Pavarotti man was arguably, now you can't even say arguably, was probably the greatest tenor ever. You know, not Black Pavarotti. Well, Pavarotti, Pavarotti was right. probably the greatest tenor as far as like mass worldwide appeal, sales, you know, fame, fair, sure. fair. And I was like, man, let me let me let me take that. You know what I mean? Black B L A Q P A V A R O T T I, and it, it kind of just stuck because I can sing anything, gospel, right. uh, pop, R and B, nice everything. I actually saw Pavarotti live. Man, did yeah. you? And, you know, for those who don't know, he's an opera singer. I went to see. Um, I was in Germany making a movie in Munich, and it's the time when Michael Jackson broke his leg or twisted his ankle, whatever. Mm. He had Michael Jackson and friends. It was Pavarotti. It was Luther Vandross. We man. saw in a big venue, and Michael Jackson went up on something and supposed to come down, stop, and he fell through the stage. Let me tell you, he a bad dude. I could, you know, we didn't know he fell through the stage and popped back up, and he still moved with his, with his swollen ankle. And then, you know, for, look it up. 19, it was like probably September-ish of 1997 in Munich, Germany, is when it happened. But I saw Pavarotti. Pavarotti man. a bad dude. So man. if 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 you the black Pavarotti, damn, yeah, man. you got the vocals. Dig it.
Shit. So now I remember uh, hearing that you, like I said, you did radio. Mm -hmm. I still uh, do. Okay, yeah. okay, there you go. But um, you got a lot of celebrities that you interviewed too. Man. So you had Martin. Yeah. Who, what name couple people you had that you uh, interviewed? We did interviews with like Martin, LL, LL. Eric B and Rakim. Um, who else did I do? Man, we did so many Fat Joe before he was really Fat Joe. Um, I, uh, I remember I got the call that day that Roger Troutman got shot. I, wow. Yeah, I, yeah they yeah, called yeah. me from there. Um, man, uh, who else? I've interviewed, man, I've interviewed the New Edition cats and then end up being on tour with them, you know, De La Soul, mm -hmm. MC Light, a lot of the hip hop guys, hip hop any, guys. Any of them stood out? Any of huh? them stood out? Any interview ever stood out to you? Like said, man, I remember this one. This was a little twisted or changed or something like that. Mm, I don't know, man. I just, just remember being, you know, after I, I, I really never realized how I was in so much greatness at the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't realize what, 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 I, what I had in my hands, what was in front of me, man. Like, I'm, I'm sitting here, at, at the time, I had no idea that I was going to be touring with right, a lot of sure. these cats. I had no idea, so it was just like, all right, well, I'm doing my radio thing, I gotta go here, and then I gotta go home and do homework because right. I gotta go to school because I was only 15, 16 at the time. Right, right, nice, and, nice. Man, so it's crazy. Well, well, I want you to understand you in greatness now, nigga, okay? Yeah, for so sure. Remember this part. Okay? I understand now. All right, brother. you in greatness I'm now. I'm 50 something, I did I it. Damn, but now. right now you in greatness, so it's not like <laughs> you forgot this when it kind of, kind of moves on. I get it. Um, okay, so this is all in Cleveland, right? Yeah. And, right, so um, how are we gonna move, you got so much about your life, man. So how do we, how do we run into Gerald Avert to see you? To uh, put you crazy. In so uh, the, the thing about back in the day, all artists had to go to the black mom and pop stores. If you didn't, oh. I don't, it was from Luther Vandross to Whitney to Mariah. They all had to come to make their rounds to the black mom and pop retail stores. Okay. If they didn't, then they wouldn't buy your records from the one stops. The one stops were like the local warehouses that got it shipped to them. And so... Uh, my mom, she worked for the government, uh, right. um, they, but on the weekend, she worked for a record store called Fillmore East with a lady named Beverly Taylor. Okay. Gerald lived, like, right down the street. Okay. So I had been seeing him since I was, like, 12 or 13 years old, but had no idea what was to come. So uh, one night, uh, one of the guys at the radio station, a guy named Jeffrey Charles, he actually down here in Atlanta, um, he, he was a singer as well as a, as a disc jockey, and we, he had a... He, concert and then we okay. went to they went to his house for an after party so my partner jason champion and i we were there and we used to always run around with this casio keyboard with the tape on the on the batteries and gerald came and everybody was like sing 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 so we sang for him and and after we sang he was like do you, you remember know, what you sang it was original or something uh, it was it was a song that jason wrote called girl it was it was, so it was original. a real primitive ass song yeah what did y'all before you got with him were you trying to get into the business? Like, was a group? Of, what was like? So it, we, the crazy thing, we called Men at Large, but <laughs> we were called BBT, Big But Talented. Hell no. <laughs> hell we, no. Hell BBT. Yeah, yeah we, we Ain't played a bank on called BBT. Yeah, B yeah B nigga. Oh, oh, BB and T are back. Come on, See, man. That's what we, I thought. We got to the money. Y'all had the money. We got to it a little you, bit. All okay, right, go know, ahead. It was pulling out our pockets. Right, right, right. Though. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, yeah, we would go around. We would sing at the talent show, at the Red Bar. You know we was at the food festivals, man. Right, so they, right. They had all the festivals all around Metro Cleveland, East Cleveland, Glenville, sure. you know, War, uh, Carouge, you know, all that. So we were singing at all of them. And, uh, you know, we would see the dad's band there. We would see Gerald in there, but had no idea. But after that, he was like, yo, I'm going to hook you up. That was 86. Mm. Man, we didn't see him again until 89. Wow. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that was when the first album, um, was it The Big Throwdown with mm -hmm. Pop, 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 mm -hmm. and Casanova, mm -hmm. and All Seasons on that record. That was huge. They mm -hmm. was gone. And uh, I saw him, and uh, you're going you're gonna to trip when I tell you this. <laughs> I was coming out of the studio with a dude named Johnny O, and his group was called the Sorcerer Crew. Me and one of my homeboys, we used to dance, like hip-hop oh, well, dance. Oh, yeah, nigga. Turn shit off. Yeah. You used to dance. <laughs> yeah, man, listen. Before I got, yeah, yeah, all right, make the face. I'm saying, like, we used to be, like, I'm really close. No, no, we good. You, you can do what you do. It, we used to be called Big Step. Me and my homeboy, Leon Cloyd, he passed away a few years ago. Oh. And, uh, you know, we used to we used to rock. We had the, the Bobby Brown. The, okay. My know. grandmother made us uh, these pants with the big hammer pants. The hammer shit? Oh, my no. God. And we had the patent oh. leather tie-up shoes on. We Come used on to now. rock. We was going to the car, and we came out. He was like, yo, I got this idea for three big dudes that can sing, dance, da 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 da, da. So long story short, because it's going to get long, I'm going to cut it. No, we went to the studio, 
Uh, we auditioned for him. Steve Russell from Troop was there. Wow. Uh, all, the whole group, uh, LaVert was there. The Rule Boys were there, the office staff. And we auditioned, and I brought a couple other guys with me, but they wasn't really good enough. And you, me and Jay, he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a couple more days after that, we had to audition for his father. So you know you got to get the stand from Eddie LaVert, man. Right, the right. king, sure. uh, come on the now. goat, man, the African king, uh, nice. Eddie Martin. And um, he was like, yeah, yeah, man, you got one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's how he'd be like okay. that. And so uh, he was like, yeah. So that was like 89, and it, it took us like three years to 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 put it all together because 89 was the Just Coolin' album, so they, right, they it was gone again. Anything. But right. they would let us perform on certain dates and different stuff like that. You know, we actually we signed our contracts in 90 with them. Really? Yeah, yeah. Who, yeah. who named y'all Men at Large? Man, what's crazy, I heard something on an ABC record, man, because we changed our name from Another B bad creation, you know. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So we changed our name from BBT to Boys from the Hood. And I was like, dog, I'm not about to be 50, 60 years right. old on stage. I hadn't put it together. And I'm walking right. on my cane. My boys from, from the, the hood. hood. Right. Big ass coming out there with a cane. Right. And uh, I can't do nothing hoodish. Uh, but put on the hood, you know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. I was like, I heard someone that said some men at large. I don't even know what the record was, but, you know, we was rocking to it. And I was like, that's the name of the group. You know, because a man at large is somebody that's large, but right, it's a man that. at large is somebody large in stature. Right, sure. You know what I mean? So we went with it, and, and it stuck. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so, so, so Levert, I mean, a girl signs you. Mm -hmm. You start getting in the studio to cut your first album with them, right? Yeah. Are you guys the writers, or who writes the songs? Man, you know what's funny about that? They wrote everything, man. They, you know, they we would bring stuff. He was like, man. They is who? Gerald and Mark. Okay, okay, and, uh, okay. You okay. Know. So Levert, basically. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so we would come in there like, man, get that bullshit out of here. <laughs> your own original? Your yeah, own original? Yeah, oh, wow. stuff. You know, we, but we got a chance to write some stuff, man. But, uh, you know, the, the business is, was, was crazy. And, you know, uh, Everybody didn't get everything they were supposed to get. You know, if you give a line or a couple lines, where you're supposed to get that. Right, you sure. Know, sometimes, you know, we ain't get it. It's a lot of records I could look at and be like, yo, I wrote that, I wrote that, I should have get that, but you know. Right. I, was, I, was actually, I wanted to ask you about it, because you're definitely a vet in that scenario. One of my friends asked me, he said, man, ask him about that. Like, do you feel... I hate to say it like this because it probably happened. That as a young artist, you get taken advantage of. Like they, sure, like they yeah. purposely say, "We well, I'm going to fuck them. I'm taking no extra that's money. Why, that's money. why they only mess with young dudes. Really? Man, come on, man. Because you're young, you're impressionable, you're sweaty. I mean, unless you come into the game like a Jay-Z or something like that with money already. Right. You're young, you're impressionable, your family, y'all can't eat. You might have a baby. Sure. You, you know, your mom, you're looking at your mom struggling. She might went through all kinds of stuff. You're like, I got to get this. I got to take this. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't necessarily like that for us, but, you know, when, when we were in that mode, we were thinking, yo, this is some bullshit. What do you mean? You saw the contract? You said it was some bullshit? We, we were was thinking it? it was bullshit. After a while, at first, we was just like rocking. We had lawyers and different stuff like that, but we it just, it, the nature of the business back right. then, I mean, shit, Ray Charles only got five cent a record. And how many records he right. got? Right. Sure, when, sure. You know what I mean? New edition, all these cats, you know, we came up through that era. I think the first people to probably break that cycle was uh, Michael Jackson. I think he got a quarter, and Tony Braxton, I think, got like, I'm not sure, but, you know, we weren't, we we just we just was rolling, man. We had we was having a good time. We right. was we was going around. We was yeah. smashing chicks. Right. We was making bread. Right. We was. But, but okay, but let me ask you a question. So here's here's my thing. Let's say for instance, record standard is a quarter a song. I mean, mm -hmm. I, how do you want to look quarter at a quarter? Album. A, a quarter of an album. Okay, a quarter. You get a quarter per album. If that's hold on, if that's standard, I get it. Yeah. But if if that's standard, but someone tried to give you twelve cents, they doing they they shitting on you now. Yeah. But, Why but the motherfucker do that? Like, what, damn, homie, did you that, give the man a quarter? Well, first and foremost, it's always a ripoff anyway with the record. If you sign the regular with the record company, you got a lot of times they got to recoup this and recoup. But deals are different but, but, now. But back then, if you sign, so like I think us, Silk, I think TLC, and a bunch of us groups had these same type of deals where we weren't signed directly to the labels, but we were signed through these companies like Silk through Keith, TLC right. through Pebbles, right. us through Gerald. And so... When you go through that, it, it start to break down because they got to get their cut and then right. you get what's left. Right, right. That's sure. shitty. No, no, no. It's, I get it. Yeah. I, I got something you know like that You know what I mean? Because they got to get their money. And, and the crazy thing, a lot of time, a lot of these production houses and stuff already has stuff in-house. So 
instead of just doing really like the straight up thing, they would have you recoup stuff. Like because you use their stuff like daddy's house. You know, his his thing is, you know, Puffy, this thing is notorious for the recoupment. I think it was like fifty to a hundred percent. You gotta recoup everything. Right. You know, if you, paid, if, you, right. if you sat in the studio and farted for an hour, you're paying for that. You know right. what I mean? You got a, a drink of water out of there and it took you three hours to drink it, but you you paying for it. You know what I mean? So uh it the, the, the game but, was, but, but but let me ask you a question. But why <laughs> get in the comments, but why is that wrong if if my studio costs you three hundred dollars an hour? You went in for an hour, I'm going to charge you $300. Well, I should it's, not it's charge not. you. If you want to just talk with me for three hours on a song and talk about bullshit and what you think about you're still in my studio. So, facts. So you, it's facts, you, you should know that as an artist, like, we paying for this. Let's get this song quicker. But you don't, though. You don't know what? You don't a, know what a, lot of, a lot of times you don't know. So, you people, so hold on, these young artists think that I can be in the studio for free because me and him cool? Sometimes they do. That, that, Sometimes that, that ain't the artist's fault. That ain't the artist's fault. I mean, that's not the uh, owner's fault. That's you the artist's right. fault. Right. So that's why they get them young and impressionable. You ain't, you ain't, you're not going to see too many, they ain't really signing people like that now, no, but you're you right. ain't going to see too back many in the day, so people going line. back signing no 30 or 40 year old dude. Even if they incredibly talented, you're not going to see them signing nobody like that because at 30 or 40 years old, a woman or a man is set in their ways. It's not really too much you could dupe them with uh, right. unless they just been beat up and, and right. they need uh, T.D. Jakes to, right. to save them right. and counsel cool. them. You know what I'm saying? It, you, you're not going to really be able to sell them a, a horse with no legs and say right. it's a, a, a champion sprinter. Right. You ain't going to be right. able to do that. Yeah. You mean now? Then too. Okay, but how do they get... I guess they, they, they don't want to talk to no other artists. I mean, I would have came to someone like you if I'm about to record, if I know you, my friend, like, what's up, man? Because I figured you as an artist would tell me quicker than a lawyer. Because probably the lawyers are probably getting, they just want to get paid. You throw, you throw, you know, $500,000 on the table, they know they're getting 10% of it. Nigga, you're going to sign this. I don't give a damn. You and know sometimes what I'm saying? it be so, in their best interest is to say what this person telling them to say. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm saying. To exactly, get that $500,000, yeah. make you sign that $500,000. The money's on the table. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, go on, sign. they cool people because I need this 50 racks off of this mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And you sign it. That's yeah. some dirtiness, man. Dr. Dre tried to sign me. I did a, a thing with, called Been There, Done That video with him, and then he liked me. He wanted to do an album with me, you know, an album. But he offered me 5000 Was it 5000 No. He offered me 15000 for five albums. Mm -hmm. Not Dr. Dre. Mm -mm. Now, my doctor, I would sign for him. My regular doctor, not Dr. Dre. Because he was on the aftermath. I was like, nah, I don't feel that, man. He recorded my album. Now, did I make a mistake? I probably could be larger if I would went ahead with it, you know. I probably would be, you know, you know what I'm saying? Maybe larger at the time. I don't know, but you know, the money, you know, I was like fifteen, maybe, 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 five maybe albums for fifteen thousand dollars. That's three thousand dollar album. I mean, you have to look at what, what was they, what were they giving you on the back end, point wise and different stuff like that. What were they? Yeah, giving the back you end don't never be back end. You get back end <laughs> at the back end. You know about that boy? Yeah. You know the I'm back end. Saying, you get all your money up front. But, but I'm saying you, see. you still have something you can go get later on because they they've changed up so many things and uh, mm. you know forgiving stuff and then now they're giving artists after 35 right. years you're able right. to go back and reclaim the ownership of your masters right. and different stuff right. like that. So we up, we up on Damn, that. Damn, I should do. We on that. Well, I don't know if you say that because you know what's crazy. He might have not, my Dr. Dre might not have known what to do with a comedy album right. unless you were singing and rapping. No, no. He no, might not no. have known what to do, but I'm saying if he was going through Jimmy Iovine and him, right. you know, it, it might have been it might have been a good situation for you. You know what I'm saying? It could have led to TV, right. more TV, right, 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 right. more movies. movies. Like that. Right. You just never know from, but but you don't Shit. never know until you you know you jump off the bridge. Right, right. Hi, Dr. Dre. <laughs> Do it now. Hallelujah. You what? probably got you probably got better stories now to oh, tell of course, of than course. you had then anyway. Mm -hmm. Your experiences, your life. I mean, you know, man, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was doing aftermath. He was trying to get a lot of people, you know, on the label. But uh, I had a great time with him. No shout out to Dr. Dre. I had a great time. I don't, uh, I don't necessarily regret it, but uh, you know, it's interesting, man. So, um, but yeah, I, I hate to hear how these young cats. I, it's like always the same story when it comes to the record industry getting messed over. I'm like. Why is it constantly, like you said, maybe not now because now kids get on social media and do their own songs and do their own money. It's so Cats different. Cats can sit on their phone, do a yeah. record, and put it out. Yeah. And, it's, yeah. and it sounds like you did it at Chung King Studios right, okay. in New York. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Because I see, I see so many artists, you know, it's got dope videos and shit. You know what I mean? Who is this dude here? And they got some fly videos. So all you get is a fly cameraman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you dump, jump in that joint on there. So, but I feel bad for some of y'all who, you know, got really jerked, man. You know what I'm saying? So, so many talented people, man. And I would say to me, and I told everybody, now, you're going to agree with this. I probably think for urban entertainment, the 90s was the best. Oh, TV, God, movies, music, 
videos, Man. comedy show. Think about all the stuff that came up. This was actually one of the reasons why I, I did the show. I, I did the show because I would see like these podcasts only having the newer people on. You get what I'm saying? The newer people are new right. recently. And I was like, hold on. There's a lot of artists in the 90s that made it possible for you new niggas to be on these right. podcasts. I said, and they don't show the love to a lot of these people back in the 90s. Right. I mean, we've been doing this about three and a half years, this podcast for you. So I said, no, 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 no. And plus, I have a lot of stories with these people. I've known these people, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, so I decided, hey, let me start this podcast and show some love to people, you know, and I'm That's glad dope. some people really it. like it. Oh, yeah. no, man, we, you know, she had, like, it's like, good, man. You like good, you. man. I, I brought um, sometimes, you know, you, you funny and, you always been funny, but yeah, this, this is a dope platform. I appreciate that. Now, you, you know, y'all hits came in like, you know, started off in 92, when the first album, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Minute Large, yeah. and it's called self -Aplain. Let me tell people, the fact that they had hits on the radio, and had hits, let me tell you the competition. You ready for the competition in 92? <laughs> that they had, that was on the radio, that these guys had to go into and work with and get their records heard? Here we go real quick, some of the competition y'all had. You ready? Yeah. Whitney Houston, <laughs> Keith Sweat, yeah. Boys the Men, Michael Jackson, don't forget that. In Vogue, Jade, TLC, come on now, Mickey Howard, Jodeci, Shy High, don't act on that. Bobby Brown, Mariah, Freddie Jackson, R. Kelly, and the public announcement. Who else? Mint Condition, of course, Gerald Levert, mm -hmm. Levert. Tony Braxton, Rude Boys, Luther Van Drohos. BB and CC? Yeah. Come on, I'm, 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 my throat hurting right now. Yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> that, man. After seven? Yeah, man. Allison Williams? Yeah, man. And last but not least, Paperboy Diddy. Diddy. <laughs> not Diddy. Diddy. D I T T Y. Look yeah, it up, y'all. Don't ask my. Shout out to my man Mitchell Johnson, aka Mitchell. Paperboy. Come on, y'all remember that? My time is held up extremely for cookies. A lyric from him, man. But man, to be in, <laughs> <laughs> like, <"All> right. <laughs> yeah, looking up, looking up for those young cats who don't know. That's did, crazy. Yeah, really? paper boy. But you can't. You came during that time. Yeah, it's steady. What? Yeah, man. I ain't gonna Cass, my, Cass, my Cass, trying, to, trying to say this, man. But every time you turn on Unsung, okay. you see us in the top ten with anybody they pulling from the the thing. And I'm like, damn, why y'all ain't putting us on there yet? What? What? Is, we got some crazy stories to talk about. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like some stuff we did, some things we like. I know they want to know because I, 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 they they wouldn't believe some of the things we did. On Come on, stage. what, what we here now? Yeah, I know. Damn, right? damn, unsung. The I got you will. here. Okay, F I got you on un, un, un panic room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, damn that. Okay, hell yeah, damn yeah. The unsung. Okay, <laughs> um, a couple stories I've heard that was called. You know, let's think about the touring. Like, okay, so the. So the, so the hits come out, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, 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 Use Me comes out first. Yeah. yeah. I saw the video for Use Me. Straight 1990s, man. Okay, yeah. the little shorts, the big old jacket. <laughs> Everybody doing the same dance move and shit, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. I love it, man. Did y'all have a good time doing that video, man? That was your first joint, man. We was on cloud nine, B. We was in Philly. We was up there hanging out. We was doing whatever we wanted to do. We had a pocket full of money. Ooh. We was popular. We were, and, and the one thing about us, I think one of the biggest mistakes we did was never created a mystique for ourselves. Mm. We just went out and hung because we wanted to be with the people because we, okay. was, we, was, we was chasing pussy. Right, right. That makes you know sense. what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, yeah. We was chasing it, like right. not running either. They didn't even be able to run fast. We I don't want you to chase it. Y'all hits, man. It should come to you. Well, you, you, you know what I mean. We wanted okay, to be you were there. Get it like right, that. You know club, what I mean? Right, we, right. we was out looking for it. And, yeah. uh, man, we, was ha we had a ball, man. It I was, know, that's it right. was incredible. You know, just, and, and you know, at the time, it was like a lot of the, 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 um, the, the major group, we was hanging out with Yo-Yo and Mike Bivens. Come and on we now. New York, we was hanging out with, you know, it was a thing between Jason and Boys the Men. It was like, Gerald mm -hmm. and Mike Bivens was like, they was arguing back and forth, who was the best? Was it my guy Jason or was it or was it Wanye from Boys the Men? On, right, right, right. Man, it was, man, it, we, it was some great times, man. Right. It, it was you and Jason Champion. Mm -hmm. Shout out to him. He's still around. But then you had a member who I saw on, on one of them song, on that song, that passed away, Gemini? Yeah. Well, well, how so, did that happen? So how this happened was, uh, we always got two different takes on how we separated. Like, we didn't fall out over money okay. or nothing like that. Okay. He, he, long story short, he got his calling. He said God told him. He said he was at the crib getting high, and God told him, give it up, leave it alone. Right. He said the phone just rang, he picked it up, and it was me. And I was calling to tell. I was really calling to tell him, like, you know, I, was, I wanted to do something different. We got a whole different, but anyway, he was going on to do something with, uh, 
you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, gospel. Right, you know I mean? right, But he right. took, like, he didn't do nothing for, like, 12 years. I'm like, what you waiting on? But, you know, so I was like, yo, I can't stop, man. Right, I sure. wasn't going to stop. And I wanted to go solo, but I had a team of people that were accredited, record industry people. It was like, man, if you got somebody that's going to put some money behind it, man, keep going. There you go. And mm -hmm. uh, so I, I did an APB out in Chicago because I knew of this guy out there that I had met one night at an uh, after party in Chicago. Okay. And he came out the first night we ever did so alone. And he sang it in the crowd, went crazy. And I just told him, I said, if I ever have something for you, I'll come back and get you. And when that happened, pff, we flew up there, found him. And it was crazy because he was in the, uh, Steve Harvey was doing the Apollo thing because he's okay. on the radio yep, up yep. there. And he won it twice. And I was like, yo, when you finish with that, we going to get it. And we, nice. we, for like 24 years, we was together. Man. Nice, nice. On that album, you also had a song called So Alone. Yeah, man. It was a romantic one. It was sad. You know, I was like, mm, hmm, hmm. I saw the video. Oh, man. And it was, you know, it, it's up there with them, like, Missing You video, a real sad video about a hundred you missed. But let me ask you a question. In the video, let me tell you, yeah, it was sad, yeah, 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 but let's show a little part here. Yo, you just singing and singing, just you and your boy singing. Where the honey's at? I just you and him. I get that. You sing, you're singing it. Stop, 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 stop. This picture I'm talking about, this part. I what the hell? Thing. You le who, he leaning, you lean. Come on, man. Y'all got y'all talking about women on here. If it, what? So, Is this shot so, in Atlanta? Where's so shot at? So I'm about to knock your head off real knock quick. Knock it off. Well, okay. That video is not about women. I thought about missing the honey. Two months after we signed the contract with Gerald and my mother passed. Okay. He wrote that song for me. <laughs> See, I knew I was gonna knock your head off. He wrote that song for me to sing to my mom. We and then nine months later, Jason's dad passed right behind it. Okay, okay, I feel so, you, man. Nah, but if we it, look, if we had dropped that video today, they would call us LGBT. Okay, why okay. You, but you didn't drop your you put you to put your put your mama on grandma. Y'all could put the family on there. So, women. so this so my, all it was my, YouTube. My, my biggest theory about <laughs> just all I saw two niggas on a picture singing to each other. I was pissed. I was pissed about that, man, because Aaron Hall had a song called "I Miss You That's Too" what I'm saying. with the lady dying child. Right. And I'm like, but so, the lady was on the video. So yeah. I, in yeah. every video that we did, especially okay. on, they never allowed us to have women. Oh, my. Who was they? Sylvia Rome. Come on, Sylvia Rome. Bella, uh, Atlantic Record. They never, like, we had a record called Holiday that had Tommy Ford and Tachina Arnold in it. Right. And we had these two badass chicks. And I saw the one chick was on an episode of the Wayans Brothers. Oh, hell no. And uh, we was walking, and I tried, I got her number, everything. Because you know me, I was trying to, you know what I'm saying? But, I feel and they you. cut all those scenes out. It's just me and him next to each other. I know, that's right. Oh, lovey man, dovey. Man, so my theory is. They didn't really think that us two big dudes was going to appeal to the ladies like that. And little okay. did they know, they, they didn't know what to do with it. Because right. if you look at the first album, man, they had me dressed up in some damn utility belt. If you right. take, you got to think right. over I saw it. I saw I, the jeans, the painted jeans, uh -huh. some damn utility belt with a canteen on it. I was like, okay, let's, 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 let's go, man. We good. And, and. Then after that, we was like, nah, but when we was out on the road, they was like, Gerald Nettie was like, man, y'all got to y'all got to change that up a little Come bit. Come on now. Jeans, but, so we started getting custom made clothes and from, you know. As um, well you should. Yeah. And uh so then the next album, they put us in the linen suits, 5001. What's up? 5001 flavors, man. And uh, you know, it, it started, it, it was different then. But on on um on Use Me, I ain't like the the little hook. Are you hungry? Yeah. Fuck out of here. Why gotta be? Why you gotta say why you you hungry? Everything was. We about know you us stay hungry, fat. right? Everything was about us being fat, That's some man. Some bullshit. It, well, I mean, shit. They didn't know what to do with it, man. I you couldn't fight home. against it. You couldn't say, man, I ain't, I ain't feeding no bitches. Man, we couldn't say, man. We we was just rolling. We was happy to do this shit, and we was kicking it. Women like thick men. They do. Okay. Now I'm a living. Let me with a camera. What camera? Right there. It's your camera right there. I'm a living and will a testament to it. They well, do. you know who started off was your boy Gerald Levert. Heavy D. Heavy D? Heavy D, Gerald. Well, singing, yeah. Yeah, Ger I guess Gerald singing. Yeah, women Gerald, love Gerald, Gerald they LeVert. They love him, man. They do. Yeah. And y'all got discovered. So you got Gerald LeVert and y'all. Yeah. So we had Chick-fil-A and churches. <laughs> I got love yeah. for you. He going to let us be the greasy <laughs> ones. <laughs> Chick-fil-A is sugary <laughs> right. and churches is, yeah. is But, but black folks love them both. Black yeah, folks sure. love them both. Yeah. yeah. Shit, but uh, I'm glad that I'm here, yeah, y'all. Because women like big men. Trust me, I done lost a couple of girls. I got this girl I used to have a crush on in ISIS. Yeah. She loved number big men. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's okay, good. though. It is, what, it is what it is. But for real, big men 
are in, brother. They've always been in. I'm telling y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, people used to joke. They, they used to be trying. They tried to hide it, but then it came out. Wow. I remember one time I saw Rudy Ray Moore in Cleveland. Uh, Dolomite? Yeah, Dolomite. Oh, Dolomite. Way down in the jungle. There you, there you go. That's why Big Man, he said, you need to get your big motherfucker like him. He said, he won't go deep, but your show sure know he's there. Wow. He said about you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that, that shit was hilarious. Let, let, let me tell you a little story Club about Dolomite. lost it. Okay, let me tell you a little about Dolomite. I was a young comedian in L.A., and we were doing a hotel, like a lobby, like a ballroom of a hotel. Yeah. And, I, you know, and, and I, was, I just drove there, you know, because I was... It's like in Orange County, about yeah. an hour outside of L.A. And, uh, you know, the show was over with. And he was like, you selling T-shirts? He's like, you should come upstairs to my room. I'm like, the comedy show down here, though. You know, right. we're, we're finished the show down here. He's like, yeah, but we finished, man, you know, going upstairs to my room. I'm thinking, he a legend and shit, right? Yeah. But whatever you need to talk about, we can talk about it in the lobby. I'm like, well, yeah, but you can come upstairs to my room. I was like, all right, I'll be there in a little while. And I, I bowed it out, man. And then I heard stories that he had a little sugar in his tank. Wow. Yeah, man. I was close. Woo. Why do everybody have sugar in their tank, man? No, not everybody. I don't have it. Well, me neither, but I'm just yeah, saying. No, don't, don't put everybody. Don't do that. Don't do that. Everybody. <laughs> Why you, do got, you got it, nigga? Shit, okay? No, no. No, you part of everybody. <laughs> no, no, no. Ex exclude everybody me. Everybody but us and Exclude me, me and you. Yeah, there you go. It. There you go. Um, <laughs> um, well, I ain't going to say everybody got it, but uh, there's a lot. Because, first of all, it's the arts, you know. And a lot of times, you know, people who are from the LGBT community or whatever, they're, art, they're artistic, a lot of them. Yeah. Are, you know what I'm saying? So probably that's, people gravitate toward the arts, and that's, you know, what it is. Yeah, I, um, was, I was watching the show, uh, the, the Griselda thing. Yeah, 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 them, yeah sure. And, like, they even had them doing it. It's 1978. I right. know they probably was doing it, but... Like, did it really have to be a part of that then? Because it's like everything has to have it now. Well, let me tell you. Everything. You, homosexuality started way back. The Greeks. The oh, Greeks. I know. Yeah. First of all, probably from caveman. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Two niggas are hollering at each other. You know, they got tired of hitting hit girls in the head with the fucking you know, thing. Bow. They're like, you know what? This is too much drama. Women was giving drama back in the caveman days. Dude was like, you know what? What about you, player? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Damn her. I'm tired of dragging her by her hair and shit to the house right. and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, homosexuality been around a long time. Forever. Yeah, it's just. People who aren't comfortable with it feel really, you know, bad and want to say stuff. It's always funny when a guy would tell me something like, I ain't got no problem against homosexuals, you know what I'm saying? I ain't got no problem. Yeah. I just don't want them around me, you know what I'm saying? I ain't got no problem with them. No, you have a problem with them. Exactly. Because yeah. if a white man had a white daughter and said, I don't have against nothing but black guys. I don't want my wife, my, my daughter marrying a black guy, being with a black guy. We wouldn't be like, okay, you're not racist. You're pretty much like black people. You just don't want your daughter to be with a black guy. Right. We wouldn't be like, nigga, please, you don't like Black men, right. sir. Period. So same thing with homosexual. I just, I'm like this. I can live amongst them. Yeah. I have no problem with them. I let them know that I'm not part of that community. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I support your rights doing what you want to do. Sure. But I ain't down like that. If you try to cross the line, it turns to something different. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Hey, man, we in entertainment. We got to work with them anyway. Hey, let me tell you something about them. Come they on pay now. well. well, well, well okay. I, I right. got play directors that, that I'll be on them play. Man, they pay well on mm -hmm. time. The deposits early. You'll have you never have no problem. They don't try to haggle you for your price. <laughs> okay. No, that's Yo, real talk. Dog. That's real yeah, talk. That's real talk, yeah. Yeah. So let's go back to um, you touring and getting some shows and so forth. Gerald Levert uh, hollers at you. Where were you, unfortunately, when you heard the passing of him and, you know, uh, yeah, man, that was, uh, yo, it was, it was crazy. I was in Cleveland. Okay. I had, uh, wow. I don't know, what was I doing in Cleveland? Because I was living here at the time, and, and I was going home for something, probably doing something I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> and uh, that morning I woke up, and I was, uh, I, I, I was with my, my brother's girlfriend, and she was taking me to the airport to get a car. And my girl was hooking it up, and she, uh, that worked out there. She was like, just bring me a, a dozen uh, Krispy Kreme donut, and I got you. I was like... I got it. I'm gonna get sure. two dozen. Hook it up. So, and I'm driving out there, and the car kept going like it kept swerving. I said, "Man, something wrong with your car?" He was like, "No, it's probably your fat ass." He oh, said, "That's dragging it like that." I was like, oh, "Okay, yeah." Right. So then I get there and I leave, and I get a call from one of my homeboys. He said, "Hey, man." His name Ronnie Knight. He said, "Hey, man, I heard we lost Gerald." I was like, "Man, get off my phone with that bullshit, man." Then as soon as he hung up, Joe Little from the Rude Boys called me. It was like, yeah, man, Joe. we lost G. We lost G, man. My heart dropped. I was like, this cannot be happening because we had fell out. And we had just got back cool 
Wow. We, we, we didn't fall out, fall out, but somebody was trying. We had fell out a long time ago, but we had got back cool and everything was straight. And somebody got in and tried to infiltrate that. And 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 it was it, we had got cool, man. And we was cool. We was talking about working again. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, the only thing I ever said to anybody is that I miss you and I love you. And I want to start working wow. again. And he was like, yeah, man. He was like, like, he's like, I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of all this shit. Mm -hmm. And two weeks later, I'm in the city and he gone. Wow. I was like, nah, this can't be happening. And, uh, you know, then everybody went and gathered at his house. Sean was still alive then. And the mm -hmm. first thing Sean said, you know, we, man, we, man, I'm, I don't know, man, we gonna die. Everything gonna be all right, man. I'm gonna take care of it. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. Yeah, like, yeah, he wasn't mm -hmm. thinking about nothing but like getting to the money. I'm like, right. I said, grieve, man, process. Right, but it, sure. was, uh, it, it was a day that the world kind of like stood right. still, man. Right, and uh, right. his service was like six, six or 9,000 people. Not, Yo, dog. No, I'll tell you something. I didn't know how popular he was, man. You know, whatever, it wasn't for whatever it was. But when he passed, yeah, all I would hear, and then I started doing more research, you know, whatever, hearing more stuff from him. I was like, wow, I didn't know the impact that he really had at the man. time. You know what I'm saying? Stevie um, Wonder was there. Damn. Angela Wimbush. Come on, was why there. not? Uh, uh, the judge from Detroit. Uh, Mathis. Mathis was there. Officials. Uh, Johnny. Uh, man, everybody was there. And, they, and Stevie Wonder, he came in. He was pissed because they lost his uh, luggage at the airport. Really? And he came in. It was like, move out of the way. Stevie's coming. Stevie's coming. I said, man, this dude been a legend for a long time. I said, when he come by, I'm just going to rub his back for good luck, man, when he come through. He came through. I was like. <laughs> you, rub, you rub his back? Hell yeah, I did. He can't see me, so it wasn't making that about a bitch. He, he couldn't see me. No way. What difference did it make? And the same thing with his luggage, nigga. Shit, you don't know clothes you got on. You put it in there. How you know it wouldn't look? Like, he's like, he like, I don't want that outfit. I want the other outfit. He yeah. put it, put it here. Yeah. How you pissed about your clothes? Which you can't see, but you know, I guess it feels <laughs> wow. so much. But you and him had like a, would you say you and Gerald had like a brother relationship, like a, like a kind of a brother relationship, big brother, little brother relationship? Yeah, man. It was. He was a teacher, a mentor, a big brother, man. Right. Man, everything, man. He was, yeah, man. Because like you said, y'all had a falling out. Y'all had a big falling out. Damn, you fist fighting on that Tom Joyner uh, show. I remember in, uh, it did the Cleveland, like that morning show. Yeah. Remember that? You did your research. Yeah, oh, it was, because okay. uh, I didn't tell you all that. It was, I said it was a sky show. You good, Come man. on now. You good. You on your way. Okay. You on your way, man. <laughs> it's better than Mother Pie. <laughs> right. But so no, uh, no. what had happened was, man, uh, I was, I was this, this white man, had me feeling like I was, and let me not say this white man, because he's one of my best friends to this day. Is he white? Still, yeah, he white. Okay, so he white man. Yeah, Keep okay, on. fuck it. This know. white man. Wait, wait. You know, he changed colors. Like, come on, said, we run Tris yeah. Okay, so <laughs> he had me gassed up, like, and we had just left the label, you know. Right. Uh, East West, with the East West Records? You know? Well, we, we East West Records, East West Atlantic Records. Okay. And, and we left, and uh, we thought we was hot, man. We we was rolling, because it was it was popping. And uh, uh, my guy, shot him out, Scotty Campana, Italian dude, bred out the wazoo. He had me feeling like I was the king of Zamunda. Okay, now. So the newspaper called me. <laughs> this is one of my not finer moments. Okay. Because as a man, I should have did it a different way. Okay. Uh, they called me and was just asking me different stuff about what we were doing. And I, and I told him, I said, well, I feel like he didn't really want to see us be as big as him. Ooh. Yeah, I, I felt like, you know, they were jealous of how fast we were moving and they being Levert. Yeah, like mm. Gerald. I didn't say nobody I said Gerald. I didn't oh, say nobody else Gerald. Okay. And I, I did, cause me and Mark was Okay. But I, I just uh man, that's my that's my dog. Shout out Mark Gordon. And uh I, I said I felt like he didn't, you know, they didn't do what they were supposed to do with us on purpose. Uh this happened that we got we got we got stuck with this. We they didn't pass this, we didn't do that, and uh I just felt like um, you know, that the day he was jealous of how fast we took off and it right. didn't happen like that for them. Man, it was like the shot heard around the world. When I tell you my phone rang more, it was all kinds of people calling me, man, I, man, yeah, you got that nigga, you got that nigga. And I'm like, oh man, I'm sitting up there, yeah, they was like, yeah, oh yeah, I heard that, I heard them niggas went paying y'all niggas no way, this and the third, like, you got that nigga. And I'm sitting there and I felt like that time in the hallway when Morris Day was like, after he told, uh -huh. how's the family? Right, right, right. I'm sitting there like this. Oh, shit. Damn. You shouldn't have did that shouldn't shit. Have did that, man. One. that wasn't yeah. the way to do it, man. Because we, we were, even though we left, they still had respect for us for, for standing on our business. Loud to keep, uh, standing on business. That's the right. new thing they say now. Mm -hmm. for, for handling and moving out. They felt like we shouldn't have, but, you know, they respected it. And But we, we still got stuck on the, on the end with that. But we'll get to that, too. Mm -hmm. um, and so... 
we had the new record coming out and the Sky Show was in town and we right. were supposed to, I, I was part of the on-air staff for the radio station. Okay. But me and Jim and I were coming out to talk about the new album. Right. So Sean comes in, you know, Big Joe is there, the bodyguard. Sean comes in and said, yo, that's fucked up what you did, man. Ooh. That's fucked up what you did, man. That's some fucked up shit, man. I talking like that because right. he had the underbite. That's fucked up, man. Right, right. And Jim and I was like, man, shut the fuck up. Ooh. <laughs> and he was like, I was fucked up what you did, man. So then Gerald came in. Yeah, that was some bitch ass shit you did. Man. Nice, he's got serious, got real bitch, Cleveland in that shit, room. Man, he said they're not gonna play that bullshit anyway. It's some fuck. They're gonna play that shit. I'm gonna make sure they don't play that shit. This wow, the man, it, it was going on. We was going back and forth. I was like, fuck you, nigga, fuck you. This back and forth, all that stuff. Tom and then came back there. J. Anthony Brown was with them. Then came back there. We locked up and then they broke it all up, and we didn't get to go out. Yeah, Ooh. we didn't. We didn't get to go out. Of course, we didn't. Big get to bank, go out. take little yeah. bank. Yeah, yeah, real talk. And uh, <laughs> but I still got to go out with the on-air staff because you know my right. pops' uncle wasn't gonna allow that to happen. But I went out there, and, and what was funny about it was the next day they had the Black Expo in the city, and I saw Jay Anthony Brown. He was saying, he said, "Man, you should have kicked Gerald's ass." Wow. And I was like, "Man," but uh, how I resolved it, you know, I had like the number one show in the city. Me and my man Banana, a show called Fat Friday, and um. I, I went to this club called the Mirage, and I, and I saw him. He was like, man, that was some fucked up You mean Gerald? You saw Gerald? Yeah, Jero. I saw okay. him at the club. Okay. The Mirage in the city of Cleveland right. was the spot where all the I remember NBA, that place. NFL mm -hmm. dudes came. Everybody mm -hmm. came. I remember me and Lazy and everybody on the live. You know, you know it's man. Right, you know right, saying? sure. Dude, Cleveland, dude. yeah. And, um, you know, I, I pulled up on him. I was like, yo, man, that was fucked up, man. That was fucked up what you did. You know it was fucked up. Huh. I said, man, I, as a man, I had to come to you and apologize, man, and um, come to the station. Let's talk about it on the air. Okay. So he came to the station, and we talked about it on the air. Nice. Okay. And, and I told him, you know, that as a man, if, if I got beef with you, real men handle they come beef on different. Because that ain't the way you do it. That's some sucker shit right there. Come on there. now. And so I, I was a sucker at one time in my life, just for a day, though. Okay. A sucker and, for a day. Uh, yeah, you okay. know. And, um. We was cool after that. Everything was straight. It never was. It, it wasn't going to be the same anyway because they felt like by us leaving the label, it was we didn't pay enough dues. Leaving, we didn't pay enough dues. We we were we're not being grateful. Right. You know. But shit, man. It, we we sitting on the fry machine and y'all niggas is opening franchises. We didn't understand how it went and how it was supposed right, to sure, go. Right. Sure. Sure. We, we didn't. You didn't have the entrepreneurial opportunities that you have today. Like back then, you did one thing or this, that, and the third. There was only a few people that were allowed to do multiple things. Missy, uh, you know, people like that. They it were They didn't allow everybody to do that. Mm. You stayed in your lane and that's what you did. And mm -hmm. and you took it. You bent mm -hmm. over and you took mm -hmm. it. I hate to use that example. I'm right, sorry, but, but, but shit, you know what I mean. And Figuratively, not literally. Yeah. Yeah, not literally, no. Mm -mm. Um, but uh, and, and it was um, it never was the same. But like every time I was seeing, it, be like, yo, man, I'm trying to see what we can do. And hook, man, and I just I just said, man, I I wish you would stop saying that, man, because all I want to do is just hang out. I would meet, I would see at his shows, I'd be at his plays. And the crazy thing, before Sean died, we would always be out on the play. Me and Sean, I was either his brother or I either was his. Um, his henchman. Right. And uh, we got super tight, man. And Gerald would come out and I had these little singing parts. I remember one night we had like the singing battle on stage. Mm -hmm. And I, and he and he let me have it one night. And I mean, like really let me take it. And I was like, man, why you stop? He was like, it was all you that night, baby. Nice. It was all you. I was like, nah, man, let's, let's go. I was like, you know, it's like the, <laughs> you know, like the student getting the teacher. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Sure. Or your son getting the beating your father for the first time in a sure. race or a basketball game, man. But I, I knew he was proud of me and, and wish maybe things had been a little different right. too, but he wasn't going to say it. Right. What, what, what kind of voice do you have? Like what octave? What, how that work? What, what are you? What are you singing or whatever? I'm a tenor, but I can do, tenor? you know, my, my daughter did a, a, a science project at school one time and I, I was able to do like about 19 tones. I don't man. know if I can still do it now, but I, I don't, you know, she, my daughter, Danae, y'all look out for her, Danae Tolliver. She just did eight shows at the Legacy Theater here as Sister Mary Clarence. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Sister Act. Dude, when she, I tell you, I knew she could do it, but she showed her ass, man. Nice. And uh, I was, I, I was just, man, I, I was just yeah, amazed. But yeah. she is the technical one. My mother didn't have the time nor the resources to put me in training like I didn't even know I wanted to sing like that at, at 18 17 you know what I mean she ready to rock out and um you know I made sure that was one of the the arguments that I, I'm glad that I backed down 
with my wife on was the center to uh, Landmark Christian School here because I taught her the whole thing. But man, they, she got these teachers that have taken her, they have gone to some of the, the best repositories in the world and have taken her talent way beyond where I could have. She nice. plays, she sings, she dances, she, she writes. Good stuff. And uh, yeah, man. You had me thinking about the, uh, the uh, you and you know, uh, Gerald Levert fighting and all that. I heard a story that you almost got that ass whooped <laughs> by Tresh and his crew. <laughs> now, come on, how do two R&B singers get involved with Tresh to the point where some hands are about to be thrown and y'all about to go from minute large to minute small? Yeah, man. So we, we were in uh, New York okay. filming the Um Good video. And you know that club they said that Salt and Pepper had on, on the movie? We went to the club that night. Everything that could have happened that night happened, dog. So we had this, first let me tell you how you set it up. The song on our album was called You Me. Okay. And on the album, on the record I said, I'm rapping because I love to rap. I think I'm Nas or Jay-Z. Okay. I said, I ain't down with OPP because there's HIV and Ooh. all I wanted to be is just you and me. Yeah, see how you took oh. that? So hey, dude, We all took that. At that time, that was one of my favorite, like I, the night we went there, I right. parked my truck at the airport with the damn Naughty by Nature cassette in the joint. Okay. So we get there. We go to Wendy Williams' show. Uh, she like, yeah, so what's going on with uh, you and Naughty by Nature? Uh, they're saying you guys are some old fat around the heart, this and some old overweight, fat, nasty, chubby, full of... I was like, what? What? We on the air and she, and she killing us. And I'm like, nah, nah, nah. I'm like, you, I said, nah, we don't have no beef with them. We love... I said, like, that's one of my favorite groups right now. Like, I said, the, the truck parked at the airport. Mm -hmm. Like, they crazy. He's like, no, they were up here and they were just throwing you guys into the dirt. They were talking about how fat you were this and you weren't shit, this and that. I was like, wow. wow. So we did the video. And my objective was that night was to get out and go get it that night to have fun. So she was talking about a party that they was throwing. And so we went back to the hotel, and of course, Jason, oh, you know, God's telling me that uh, right. we should stay here tonight. I'm like, man, well, you stay here with Jesus, nigga. Right. The I'm hell going no, you chase him out there. Yeah, you, I'm, I'm, I'm going out. You go out. So Atlantic sent a car. Okay. The first car came, it was me, Jason, my road manager, who was bigger than us, and our background singer. He, about your size, maybe a little smaller. We get in the car, it go boom. The shocks break in it, or they, the, the, the hydro, whatever it is, right. it breaks. He said, I told you God's trying to tell us something. I said, nigga, we'll stay here and let him finish the story. <laughs> and so they sent another car. Dude, I, 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 I got us my witness. The car came, say, boom. They had to call another car. Damn. He said, I'm trying to tell you. I said, man, nigga, listen, stay here. I'm good. Me and Fred and Lynn, we going to go. We going to go. And we gonna, he was like, he said, I had to go with you. So we get to the club. Everybody who anybody in hip hop is in there. Right. I mean, Kenny Anderson's in there, Salt and Pepper's in there, KRS One is in there, LL wow, is in there. Okay. Everybody's in this party. So I'm in heaven because I'm a hip hop fanatic. Sure, sure. So Jay was like, there go Vinny, man. So I see Vinny. I walk up to Vinny. I'm like, Vinny, what's up, man? He was like, yo, what's up, man? And I'm like, what's up with the diss? He was like, man, you know, man. We, we took that as a diss. I was like, what? I said, man, we love y'all. I'm, I'm being, uh, I'm like, man, we love y'all. Man, what are you talking about, man? Man, I got to see the disc, in, the tape in my car right now. I said, so what if we was comedians and, and we said it? Well, yo, that's different. Yo, comedy and, and, and we, you know, and, and music is different. You know, it's like in the music lane, we like competing against each other. I was like, I did this. I said, huh? Er? You know, the right. hip hop. Er? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, we all, I said, I just said, man, you know what, man? After I love you, man. We love you, man. And we pounded up, and I thought it was all cool. But Jason said, when he pounded me up, he looked like Bishop did when they pounded in Steele's apartment, like, oh, like wow. that. And I was like, oh, okay. So I go to the back, and Wendy's back there, and she's doing interviews and stuff. So we go do an interview, and we talking. So then we walking around, and we meet and greet everybody. And we walk out, and I see Tretch talking to DJ Wiz. Ken plays DJ. Right, sure. And I said, man, F fuck this. I'm about to go talk to him. Ooh, I said, boy, you a bad said, dude, no, boy. I, I, I wasn't on that, though. Oh, okay. I'm, 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 I'm pussy over punches for me. Okay. Fuck, <laughs> fucking no fight. Seriously. I love it. I hate violence, man. You know All what right. I'm saying? I, I'm like pussy over punches. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and so I go, and I'm like, I'm like, what's up, man? And he turned, he like, hey, yeah, man. Them, I remember exactly how it happened. He was like, yeah, man, them shit. He did like, yeah, man, them shits, this. Braids, had on the little thing. Right. Immediately, he stopped laughing like it was acting. He said, 
What? Walk through the club. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, well, fuck it. So I go play the video game. So you walk away. Yeah, well, I go over here. He go that way. I'm playing the games. It's all quiet. The road manager like, man, let's go. He talk like this, man, let's go. The, the car outside, let's go. We go outside. He said, man, y'all missed it. Come on, come on. It's time to go. So we start walking out. Hear a bunch of people talking. And I hear, yo, man, fuck that shit, beast. You family, nigga. But them niggas, yo, man, fuck them niggas, man. And so I don't know if he told him that he was just trying to scare us or whatever happened, but he let him go. And when I turned around, it was him and like 30 niggas that came out the club. In my head, I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, if I ever need it, oh, I need you now, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, Lord. Where you at, Jason? <laughs> we was together. Oh. And so, yeah, he was standing next to me and my role manager, I'll forever give him props for this. Every time I talked to him, he just kept walking in front. I'm like, nigga, move, let me talk to this dude. But he, he was smart because I was like, yo, Tretch, man, what's good, man? I said, man, we love y'all, man. What, what is this? He was like, yo, man, fuck that shit. Y'all niggas do, y'all niggas sing, we rap, fuck that. He said, we beat down YZ, we beat down somebody else. PM and Dawn fuck, or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. PM and Dawn. he's like, I'm fucking y'all niggas up too. I was like, come on, man. I said, really? I said, man, we, 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 didn't, we wasn't dissing y'all. It's just a song lyric. You know what I'm saying? He was like, man, fuck. He said, Fuck the, he said, he said, fuck the OJs, fuck the and fuck, fuck y'all. And I was like, man, I was like, I'm, I'm yeah, thinking, I looked at my yeah. man, I said, we two big niggas, this nigga's muscular right. as hell. I said, <laughs> I'm thinking, we might have a chance with this motherfucker, but I'm like, then Who I looked take at it? all them 30 motherfuckers over there, and I'm like, I said, hey man, we love y'all niggas. Man, fuck y'all God, niggas. Now, that's the 12th time you said we love your niggas, okay? Two new I, love I, is all I, you need to do. We was in trouble, man. <laughs> I was on the inside. I was scared of the motherfucker. I was standing in my ground. I knew my ground. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I was like, yo. And then he was like, man, long story short, he said, man, y'all, my, the car came around. And he was like, man, y'all motherfuckers get in my room. I was like, y'all motherfuckers get in the car, man, get in the car. Man, he got in the car. He said, yeah, y'all niggas better get the fuck out of here before I go get my shit. Long story short, they used to fly us out to do those stay in school jams. We was in either Charlotte or Denver. And they was like, uh, you know, naughty by nature's out there. So they they was like, they wasn't canceling. They just gave us extra security. Yeah. So we we saw him. He was standing in the hallway. By How long himself. after that that incident? It was Saturday. This was the middle of the week, and it was the next. Oh few days. shit! Okay. Yeah, Damn. Yeah. yeah. Damn, a couple of years so ago. We, walk, we walking through the stadium, and I see him standing there. So I'm with security. So I did it like this. Oh, oh. this nigga here. Yeah, I love it. Keep it 100. Like, Keep it yeah, official. I, I did it. I'm, I'm 450 something. Now. I don't give a yeah. damn when I was in my 20s. Right. Right. Fuck the 20s. Right. <laughs> and so right. he ain't say nothing. So I'm thinking, man, what the fuck is going on? So that night we had a show with SWV and all the 90s cats in Virginia. It was SI and Silk and everybody. We was always with them. And uh, some dude came to us and was like, man, he wasn't going to do shit. I said, nigga, you don't know what that nigga was going to do. Right. Ain't no telling what he was going to do, man. And uh, he said, he wasn't going to do that, man. He just trying to scare you. I was like, yeah, OK. So two years later, damn, I see him in Atlanta. Because me and Jason coming down here trying to get into the game. And we had a manager. And somebody down here that was trying to help us, and it really wasn't beneficial. So it was a night that I wanted to go out again. And he was like, man, I'm going to just stay here. Because we, we stayed with Breed, MCP, rest in peace, MC, rest in peace, MC Breed. Yeah, he man, was down yeah, here. Yeah, was cool, and uh, I went to the club. This dude is in there. Damn. I said, fuck this. I'm going to talk to this cat. I went over. I did the same thing again. Man, I just said, man, what the fuck? He was like, yo, man. As a man, I got to apologize to you. He said, man, we ain't know how to be stars, man. We was fresh out the, you know, the ghetto, this, right, that, sure. and the third. You know, man, you know, we, you know, and that's just where we was at. We ain't know how to be stars, man. You know, as a man, I want to apologize to Good you, man. Shit. And I was like, it's crazy. But I'm going to tell you another part. So, you know, he on that New Jack City tour. This fuck, this okay. blew uh-huh. my... The, mo- the, the play, yeah. Yeah, the play. Mm-hmm. Wow. So my guy was doing sound for it, was the tour manager, and he was back, and he, the other guy was doing sound that I knew. I said, man, go get that nigga trash, man. Put, put him on FaceTime. Let me see what's going on. And I was like, he was like, hey, here you go, somebody want to talk to you. I'm like, what's up, man? He was like, what's up, bro, bro? What's happening? I was like, I, I said, it's Dave, man, men at large. I said, you used to want to whoop my ass back. Do you remember that? Nah, man, I don't remember that. I was like, 
I said, all right, man, have a blessed show, man. I said, I'll right, holler at you, dog. Right, right, that just right, happened, right. like, last year. Right, right. When yeah, that's out. crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, Tresh, Tresh was not to be messed with. I mean, he whipped up a couple of R&B dudes. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, Hey, man, I was scared, brother. Yeah, uh, yeah. Him and 30 cats? Come on. Hey, I ain't have enough wind. I remember when I, I listen, man, I remember <laughs> when, my, when I was about to get married to my wife, mm -hmm. she didn't, you know, her, her, her son's father, she didn't handle that shit the right way. This nigga was a boxer and all kinds of shit coming over to the house screaming and hollering. I'm upstairs taking a shit. And I'm like, oh my God. I said, I I I knew she I said I knew I should have just handled this shit myself. Right. Man, I got up, I cleaned myself the best I could because I was midstream. I grabbed hey, a yo. screwdriver because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to box him. I right, was gonna right. kill him. Yeah, oh man, it was a rap, man. I was I was strung out like that. Now he can take her back. Right, right. Take right. my wife, please. Yeah, right, right. Now what you should have <laughs> did is not wipe nigga and fought that nigga naked and shitty. <laughs> That'd have been a whole different yeah, fight. He'd be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He'd be like, ah, 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 Give him a headlock and shit down there. Yeah. Wasn't no way we we had no air to fight that dude or all them cats together. No, no, no. Shit, man. Yeah, yeah. There was a menace. There was a kind of a menace. That was the reputation they had. That ruined a lot of things for us too, because Al Heyman was like. We were supposed to go on that Buzz super fast. I, I it saw, killed us. It killed us. He was like, nah, don't bring him out here, G, because they, they out well, here. What year was that? Cause I did it in 97. 90, it was way before that. It was like 92, 3, somewhere okay, around right, there. Okay, right, 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 right. And he was like, nah, man, don't bring him out here because they, they really street cats, man. They got a problem. Don't don't bring them out here, man. So that that kind of ruined our legacy just a little bit because the Budweiser Superfest was the ultimate. Come of, on, man. Of concerts, man. Ooh. You know, man. You know, being in Cleveland, I used to host them because I was on the come radio. On. And then you know, I would come out with with some of the groups sometime and do stuff when they came to the city. But we never got to do the tour, and so we was always. Wow. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, I, I love the yeah. Yeah. That, that was a fun tour though. That, that was a fun tour. But you talking about knowing by nature. Uh, you talking about the trash doing the. Um, the New Jack City uh, play. Mm -hmm. You started doing plays. Yeah, man. You got your little acting chops together. You did some movies yeah, and man. some plays. What's some of the most memorable plays you did? What pl memorable play you did? Which one? Uh, Mama, I ain't do this, and Daddy, I ain't coming <laughs> home, and so hot grease. I, I would say the very first play I did was a play called Stop Cheating on God's Time, man. It makes it had sense. Some, had some heavy, heavy hitters in it. Uh, Johnny Gill. Come on now. Dave Hollister. Come on. Erica Campbell from Mary Mary. Ooh. Sean LeVert. Mm -hmm. Me and my guy Gemini. Um, uh, Nikki Gilbert from Brian was a star on, studded yeah, cast, you know. Yeah. And then they would switch out Pinky from uh, Clifton Powell. Oh, yeah, he did was it in all. it a couple times. They were switching cats out, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the very first one. Shout out to Dwight. Um, what's Dwight's last name? Well, Dwight in Houston. He he picked me, you know. I, nice. I normally, you know, it's a blessing that I get handpicked. I don't really have to audition a lot of times. Uh, but some the most memorable one is one I'm touring in now. It's called A Father's Love um, okay. by my man Niall Martin. It, it stars uh, Terrell Carter from Empire, oh. um, you know. Um, uh, the the Parkers, uh, the, the the professor. Um, oh yeah, yeah, Wilson, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dorian, Dorian, Dorian Wilson, that Dorian, right? And uh, it, it's just a really good. We actually we met there in in Miami, July twentieth. Uh, okay. it, it's a dope, it's just a dope play. The storyline. Then I just did one about a month ago. Uh, my guy C L Woodson. But hold on, the last one. What are you doing right now? What are you playing at? Where am I playing at now? No. What are you playing in the one that's going to be in Miami? What's your character? Uh, uh, Daddy James. Which and is so uh, so here uh, I have two sons okay and uh, we're at my house they everybody comes to my house for Thanksgiving and they find out that I need a kidney okay but we also find out that my son has been sleeping with his best friend since they were in high school but he's getting ready to propose to his girlfriend that he brought to the house hold on the best friend is a female though the best friend is a guy hell let me turn some of this stuff on yeah. Woo -wee! it's getting saucy out here yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, makes sense. At, at one point, he come. I can't, I can't get. Y'all just gotta come check that. Of course, of course. I just want, yeah, I just want to know the character. If I give you, you any more, it's gonna be like, <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now don't give it to that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. About a month ago, uh, shout out to my man uh, C.L. Woodson out of Milwaukee. Okay. We did a play called uh, Golden Girls: Save, Not Yet Sanctified. Christopher Williams was supposed to be in it, but he didn't show up. But it was Danny oh, Boy, damn. me, and uh, bro man Reggie Ballard. Oh, come on, I and, like and that, these yeah. four ladies. Uh, I don't know all their names, right? But you can tell they studied. Nice. And they, it was the black version of the Golden Girls, but it wasn't ghetto. And I was like, dude, what was you on or who was you under when you wrote this? Good stuff. Like, because it's sometimes when we try to change stuff, like the Honeymooners, the movie, uh, it was too uh, much. Right, right. Sure. Uh, sure. You know, when we take it in and put it in our, under our own adaptation. But he, I don't know, I was like, dude, somebody got to see this and got to help you with this joint because it's, it's incredible.
Nice. It has its goofy spots, but the storyline and, and the rest of it is just really, really good, man. Yeah. Okay, okay. But before, before that you get out of here, you have a hell of a voice. When I told people about you, you know, who didn't know you, they're like, man, that boy can sing his behinds off. You know, yeah, he can really, really sing. And I've always wondered, you know, when people, because people always ask me, who's my favorite comedians of all time, whatever. Um, give me a top four all-time R&B or soul, you know, mix, mix yeah. them together. R&B soul, male artists sing it. So for a person that can sing, sing, and came yeah. into the church, let me know, you know, your top, your top four. Joe is my favorite of all time. Hold on. Joe the, Thomas. Oh, who's Joe Thomas? I want, I want to know. I want to know. That Joe? I'm yeah. no disrespect to that Joe, but damn. Okay. Okay. Oh, shit. Time. Really? Uh, nice. Steve, Stevie Wonder. Makes sense. Um, Donnie Hathaway. Come on now. Charlie yeah. Wilson. Okay. Okay. Leo Normal. You know that. But yeah, for me, your top four. Skip Martin or Daz Band. I'm sorry. I have to move him up because he was the reason I wanted to sing. Really? Yeah, man. I got a record coming out with him, too. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. Joe. Shout out to Joe. Joe Thomas, baby. I think Joe uh, dates uh, Roxy, Roxy somebody. Really? Is that Joe? Yeah, yeah. Joe dates Roxy. Some I met her one time. We both worked good on something stuff. together. Yeah, good yeah. Stuff, Joey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Joey and for real good stuff. <laughs> all, right, all, right. all right, all right. What I normally do, man, with, with my guests, I play a little thing called hoish or broish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I'm gonna ask you some stuff. These are men, grown men, somebody like 25 and older. Yeah. If they participate in this, are that a little hoish for them to do that? Or some bro shit, you know what I'm saying? You only got three seconds. Yeah. You can't sit here and talk. I need to see what you feel once I say it. Yeah. Don't be sitting there talking about, oh, my cousin do that, so I don't want to say it. No, brother. All right. That's all I got anyway. Three okay. seconds, all right? Here we go. You ready? I need to feel what you tell me. You can explain how you feel about yeah. it. All right. A man wearing a charm bracelet, you know, the stuff that thing. It's bro -ish. bro -ish. I fuck with it. Bling, 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 bling. I wear them. I got these, but uh, I, I, I wear those the beads. Bracelet, oh, yeah. I fuck with it. I okay. fuck with charm All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Um, all over your body, all over your body, and I mean all over your body. You ready? Yeah. Manscaping, you know, shaving. Nah, that's hoish. What the fuck? Nah, nigga. You can't I clean got, your eye, can't, can't clean your eye, can't nah, clean. I got, I, 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 I shave it, but I, I don't want to be bald everywhere. Why well, I say bald, clean, get clean. You, you, gotta, you, you, couture, you couture it. Oh, couture, that's what you call oh, it, couture, yeah, that's what you, you call it. You know, you're yeah. shaving your asshole, you're couturing it. All right, we'll come on, go with that. Right. Well, hey, somebody, I'll be mad. Hey, <laughs> you know, some girl. <laughs> they bleach it and shave it. Woo, now that, that bleach bleach now, come on it's now. It's called blave. Okay, blave, that's what they call it. Bleach and shave, blave it. We got a new word, blaving and shit. All right, skinny jeans, man, wear skinny jeans. That's hoish. Hoish? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, is that because you don't wear skinny jeans? I mean. Well, I, I've, I've worn, like, these today are a little, but they're not skinny. Right, There's right. nothing not I wear would ever be skinny. Right, right. You know, okay. I, all right. I'm still big as fuck. Right, all right. And you said you lost how many pounds? 120 Damn. something. Yeah, yeah. Damn. That's, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Okay. What about um, Chelsea boots? Chelsea boots? What's yeah. that? Damn, they don't know that. What's Chelsea Chelsea boots? And the boots that come up this high and they brown sometimes. You know, they come in the end, you zip them on the side and shit. You know like what I'm saying? Uggs for women? For men? Hell, not an Ugg. They're just some boots, some boots, man. The boot boots, man. Go you know bro us, man. They shoes. Yeah, the shoes. All right, all right. Eating a pizza. I'm going to answer this one. Eating a pizza with a knife and fork. That's bro us. I'll do that if it's it's a What the? Yeah. I thought, man, I thought you was a, from man, listen, Cleveland. I, I, man, Cleveland niggas. I know Cleveland niggas. Aye, aye, aye. If it's too man. hot, man, I'm gonna take the little knife and cut it up, darn it. Man, but you, don't, bro, but you don't wear Chelsea boots. All I right, don't. Nigga, all right, I don't okay, wear boots shit. at all. All right. Um, texting the letter K to your boy if you agree with something. Just That's always. Damn. Yeah. Because you gotta put the O in front of it. Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. What about um, FaceTime your homeboy? That's bros. Really? Nigga, I know what you look like. Yeah, How are you man, looking? I ain't gonna be in the bed like this. Yeah, you know, I, well, I don't know. I you know, okay, that. I'm nah. just looking. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Anything. Okay, all right, all right. What about like, getting a tattoo behind your ear? That's motorcyclish. <laughs> is, is that what we gonna go with? Yeah. Uh, motorcycle. Okay, all right, all right. Depends on what it says. This is one of my favorites right here. When a man sitting down, you know, my boy just throw it leg, you know, just having a conversation. So, so what we talking about right now? How is your broish? Damn. Mm, <laughs> you dirty my <laughs> It's, Come on. It look hoish right now. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. <laughs> the fuck, I got to bring my shit up. Yeah, what's up, dog? How you doing? Man, distinguished gentlemen do that sometimes, man. They're like, yeah. yeah they it's, it's really yeah. broish. It's really broish. Shit. Well, you, you slipping on here, man. Okay. Split toe sandals. Wearing split toe sandals. You know? that's, that's, 
What? It's horse, man. What Jamaicans do it? Yeah, man, I bomb a clot rice. Mm, okay, all right. What about when two people, boyfriend and girlfriend, wear the same gear, you know, wear, dress alike? That's broish, I guess. Uh, bro you guess? It's broish. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, got a couple I mean, more. we've never, me and my wife have never done this shit, but you know, it's, hey, we're going to the park, we're going to wear yeah. the same shirt. I'm his, I'm hers. Yeah, yeah. a couple, a couple, nah, couple. I would, I would never do it, but it's broish, it's cool. Would you, would you, Host your bros like dancing on TikTok with your girl. I do yeah, it. Bros. I That's broish, really? I dance with my daughter on TikTok. That's your daughter. I'm talking about your woman. Y'all yeah, both got the same little moves and shit to the song. Well, it's, hell, a lot of cats, it's a lot of cats that do it and they're going viral as hell. Right, and they hoish. Okay. And my mother like then. <laughs> uh, what, about, what about singing a female song in the car? Ladies first and shit, some Beyonce shit while you're driving and shit, nigga. You ever sing a song? <laughs> Yeah, I'll be honest with you. Any of yeah. Hold on. Shit. Damn. Yeah, come on. That's what you said. Right, right. Shit, I'm... You, you do that shit, nigga. You said a little, you said a little tender yeah, kisses said, and shit. You on that motherfucker doing. I was tender kisses. Oh, hell no. Hell, yeah, I'm just bro-ish. And this, I'm, and this is whole shit that you make me want to hear about I'm, my I'm, damn I'm, face, man. I'm, I'm comfortable with me, so you know no bottom. You know what I'm saying? I heard that. You know, lost in darkness in the closet hiding and stuff, so... Tender kisses, uh, uh, listen, uh, what up, dog? Yeah, 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 like yeah. Switching back and forth, it's yeah. me all the time. Tender kisses, what up, my nigga? Oh no way. Right. It's, I, it's the same thing all the time. I got homeboys so fucking mentally fucked up, they can't even eat, eat a banana, nigga, without breaking it off. They got like, they, yeah. I think, I think the guys that are really don't eat a banana, it's a banana. I think, I think the, yeah. the, the people, I think the people that are really scared to be around that are scared to be turned out. Yeah, okay, so, right. They have right. the most, you know, intuitions about it, or the more. Hmm, I mm-hmm. wonder if I put peanut butter on it, would right. it be okay? Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, right. that's why I say, like, when, when they was going through the whole uh, uh, T.D. Jakes thing, I was like, if he just tell the truth, it, it don't make a difference. Right. Because everybody's doing it. Come on People now. People are well, experimenting. Everybody. Just stand up, not except for me and you. Right, okay. And, you know, <laughs> stand, <laughs> stand on it because, you know, and no offense to anybody in this thing, but I'm saying... It, it, it's probably 25 to 30 percent of people in your congregation that's the same thing. When Eddie Long got exposed, he didn't lose that many people in his congregation. I, I tell people all the time, if Mike Vick had told the truth, mm-hmm. he wouldn't have lost a billion dollars in endorsements. Possibly mm-hmm. have to give that man back 120. Michael Vick was the Steph Curry of the NFL. Now every yeah. every quarterback yeah. that comes out now. Is, is is the prototype of what Mike Vick was. Mm. White, black, yellow, brown. They want him to all be able to do that. Mm-hmm. If he had just told the truth, that white, the Arthur Blanks was then, right. then too, mm-hmm. he, he wasn't going to let, uh, right, right. He wasn't gonna let Mike Vick go to jail. That was his dark horse. On, Are you now. kidding? That was the only way they was ever getting to the Super Bowl and they'd never been back nowhere. Well, one, right. with Matt Ryan. Right. But come on, all he had to do, all you had to do was just tell the truth. Mm. It's easier to get, that's what I tell my kids. Just tell the truth. The sentence is less if you tell the truth. Real shit. I respect you more if you tell the truth. People respect you more. It, man, if, it, man, if you're a man and you like to swallow a cock, Ooh. see, that's y'all word for the right, day. Right. Or if you're a lady and you like the lickety splitty, right. you eat the Gucci goose, right, the right. Gucci, what is it, the Gucci deuce, juice? <laughs> Gucci, the goose juice. The goose juice. The goose juice. juice. The goose juice. Or oh. if you're a man and you like to lick a man's tank, Ooh. man, just be Whoa. honest about it. Whoa. Everybody is doing it. You're seeing uh, it on television. You're right. seeing it on videos. You're seeing it on commercials. I'm saying, join the gang. Join the right. caravan of right. love. I'm saying, what the, what, it don't make a difference. Right. Because if we don't accept you, it's 20 million of them over there that will. will. Go join the alphabet gang. It's all good. Right, right, right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, do what you it, do. It, it, right, right. All right, well, okay. Hey, well, when we go. gone, right. we don't nobody really know what the truth is. You walk through this life by faith, and you hope that walk that you walk is gonna lead you to where you're supposed to be when you close your eyes. Wow. But we don't we don't know what's gonna happen when you close your eyes. You don't know that. But if there is somebody judging you and everything that we've been taught, come on now. We ain't the ones that's gonna judge. You gotta worry about that him and that robe when you at the gate, Man. and they telling you. I'm sorry, but you swallowed. You know what I'm saying? Right. You swallowed, no. swallowed. <laughs> Have swallowed. you ever been swallowed? Damn. <laughs> I'm serious though. Real talk though. You right. don't know what's gonna happen when you, you. We walk through this. Like we walk out that door. I'm walking on. I'm hoping I'm gonna go to Tony's party and I'm gonna get home safe to my family. But we don't know. Right. So that's on you. 
Damn. If you're going to do that, that's on you. That's your life. It ain't for you to do a song and dance for everybody else. Mm. The only person you're supposed to do a song and dance for is for God. Right. If that's what you believe in or mm -hmm. whatever, or whoever, Buddha, Allah, uh, mm -hmm. whoever it is, mm -hmm. that's, that's you. Mm. We, we don't do it. We could give a fuck less what you're doing. I don't. Right, right. It, hey, man, go on and look at this split. I don't give a damn. Right. I know what I like. Y'all say right. y'all strictly dickly. I'm exactly catly. Ooh. And I like it like I'm that. I'm strictly clickly. Yeah, that too. Mm -hmm. Damn. Exactly, Captain. All right, but well, this, well, this got to air on Sunday then. Shit, this My Lord. Give a, a sermon just now. Well, All right, yeah, bro. Wow. Uh, okay. Wow. Uh, well, you, know, you got to give him some real shit too sometimes too. You know what I'm saying? I tell you. You know, this one lady, one of my, my mother in law's friend said, I love to hear David talk, but he cussed just too mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's you get shit, to the turn people. Turn it off. Dude. Right. <laughs> turn it off. We got, we got a new Joe Old Stank right there. <laughs> <laughs> Old Stank right there. All right, give it up. For, nah, That's nah. the new Tom Joyner over there. I love it. So what I do sometimes, I do a thing called IG Creeping, okay? Mm -hmm. This is where we go to your IG page and get my crew to pick up some pictures or something. Oh, shit. And we got to com comment <laughs> on some of this, all right? Yeah. So all right, let's put up the first picture and we'll see what the hell I'm you was glad thinking. I'm I don't put Okay, that. okay. This is very nice. What, what we doing here? What was this pose for? This was a photo shoot I took... Uh, during or right before the pandemic. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm the so, shit, that's what I'm thinking. Is that what it is? Yeah, and got the shit. And damn, they got the same shit on tonight. Yeah. Damn, yeah. they got the same yeah. outfit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. that outfit, okay. Different braces, but this is my, like, uh, uh, usher with the U, this is like my signature bracelet. Is, is like, that this what it right is? Here, okay. This ring was when I was 525. Damn. Yeah, I'm digging shit, man. Damn. 525. So is that I'm a ring or, or, or rim? Or a cock ring. Mm -hmm. A cock ring. <laughs> well, Yours at least. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next picture. What were you thinking when you were there? What was, what, which Woo! one is you? Woo! Which one is you, nigga? Which one is you? You got dark, you dark skin back that's then? That's Jason. Oh, and, and that's you? Yeah, that's me. Hell no. It's like, I, it, it's like I got a hand like Paul from the uh, from oh. 36 Mafia. It's like oh, my damn. hand is missing, don't it? Yeah, man. I still had titties then, too. Yeah, and they like a substitute teacher, a female <laughs> substitute teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Thick-ass right. glasses. I ain't mad at you. What, what, so, hold on, back it up, back it up a little bit. What, what was that? Y'all met? What, what was this? What's uh, going that's, on? That was at Jason's mom's house on the street called Coventry in East Cleveland. Okay. And uh, that's where we would go. He, I was either at his house <laughs> or he, he was either at my house, man. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. Next one. What well, this nigga trying to be sexy and romantic? What is, what is this? Well, talk to so, me. So, this right here... I, I was this uh, my dude. Uh, I forgot his name right now. It slips me. My but, dude, but you forgot his name. Yeah, that's my guy though. Huh. Uh, I forgot his name, but he mm. got so many different names. It's, it's a, <laughs> right. It's an Arabic type name. But, okay. Uh, but uh, I was experimenting with uh, you know covers for an album like As Is because I found all these records that I had that I did like in the middle of the early '90s. Okay. And I was just gonna release them because the processors through the uh, DSPs will clean them up enough where they'll be good where you can still listen to them, but I haven't done that yet, so it's about uh, 80 songs on a thumb drive. Wow. Yeah, man, they're just sitting there. I'm fucking around. I love it. It's a good look, though. Yeah. Okay, got that romantic look. Go on, next one. What the? That's, yeah. Okay, there we go again. Y'all just grew up a little bit. That's that grew Barbara out. Bates right there, Chicago Barbara Bates. That's a show in Milwaukee, and on that show, if I can remember, was Case... Uh, Destiny's Child before they blew up, Eric Benet and Halle Berry was there. And what's what? crazy, look, man, we was like, can we get a picture with you? She ran. Away? Or yeah, two? she ran away from us. Damn. Yeah, she ran. Mm. She ran, yep. Mm. That's when she was dating uh, uh, Eric Benet. Benet. Eric Benet, yeah. Eric. Did they, but they both have shoes on and had no shoes on. <laughs> I don't know where he was, but she was by herself. Oh, okay, okay. Public announcement was on the show, too. Hell yeah. Show. I said, I said with the pictures? Damn, I thought, I thought another picture. You didn't picture. get the new ones, huh? Yeah, 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 no, no, no. Okay, if that's it, then look. The whole screen would have been dark. Hell no. Man, let me tell you something. <laughs> First of all, I enjoy you so much, brother, and appreciate you coming here. Man, we got a couple things. Me. Well, we got a couple things we're going to do before we walk out. One more thing we got to do. or well, two more things, but one more thing. We do a thing called spin the wheel. Uh -huh. All right? So whatever it land on, we need you to participate in it. And it uh -huh. can land on a couple things, brother. Uh -huh. So you spin it, too. We can tell you about, maybe tell us how you lost your virginity. Oh, wow. Uh, you remember that? Okay, that was, yeah. <laughs> celebrity crush call, where you call a, a celebrity at your phone, how you call a celebrity. And you, we want to hear from between a minute, minute and a half, your macking skills. You getting her to your house or you getting her, him, you know, you to go to her house. But see what you talk about. Something you want to get something off your chest. You can do that. If you can trade places with anybody, why and who? A real secret. And I think Ooh. I got that. The biggest lie you ever told. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, Hell no, no. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. That's Hell no, do. dog. That's how we do, brother. 
It's a damn game show here. I do Yo, a little bit of everything. classic, Yes, dog. it is. Hell no. Nah. All right, y'all give him a drum roll. Y'all give him a drum roll. Y'all spin that wheel. It was a Cleveland spin, though. Which way? However you want to spin it, but spin it hard. Oh, shit. Where'd that thing land on? What you want to get, what you want to, uh, what you want to get off your chest? Is there something you've been thinking, pull that up. Anything you want to think about that you're tired of or some shit, whatever, you got, you got a minute to tell us what is it you're tired of or whatever. You want to get off your chest, you know, maybe something you've been holding on your heart or something like that. You finally want to tell the folks, is your camera? Yeah, you tell them what you want to get off your chest. You've been thinking about it. Oh, there's been some stuff. I'll tell you this, man. I'll right. I, I tell you what I am tired of. Oh, shit. And I'm, I'm going to start some controversy with this. Oh, shit. Is I'm tired of these black promoters booking the same old 90s groups over and over and over and over again, mm -hmm. and you overlooking a whole bunch of them that will come on to these to these arenas and probably put on better shows, sing better, mm -hmm. hold the show better than most of the cats you got. There's no disrespect. Some of these cats is my guy. Mm -hmm. I, I, say, I say we have a, a sing-off where I pick, wow. you know, maybe I get Joe Little from the Rude Boys. I hit up... Uh, uh, who else? Who else could I get? A couple other cats. I call Jazz from Drew Hill, and we get some teams, and we battle it out, and see who the best is. Cause I know it ain't many of y'all that could really fuck with me. I'm just being honest. Ooh, I, I, you wanted ooh, some shit? I'm giving you the no, shit. It ain't really too many of y'all that stick. That you know, back in the day, you might have been able to beat mm -hmm. me, but you can't fuck with me now. And that's just about all of y'all. Just saying, I love y'all, but y'all can't see me on the motherfucking mic, really. Not like that. Not me or my man, Jason. I'm just telling you that, mm -hmm. real talk. Mm -hmm. So we can take it, let's take it to the stage, y'all Black Promoters Collective, mm -hmm. whoever it is that's booking all these shows that you got with all these other 90s groups that y'all seem to omit us, the Rude Boys, mm -hmm. Riff, Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bunch of other 90s groups that's out there that'll tear that ass up. Mm -hmm. And y'all gonna see on the Tom Joyner Cruise when we do this Gerald Levert tribute, Ooh. I'm gonna show ass on that. I'm telling you Ooh. now, I'm coming for it. And y'all gonna have to look at me different. You do now anyway, because it's like a hundred and some pounds off me, but you got to look at me different. So that's what I'm getting off my chest. Mm. Stop bullshitting with yourself. Mm. Like Snoop told Jody and Baby Boy, stop bullshitting mm. with yourself. Mm. Mm. Do you think it's a popularity competition? Maybe somebody's more popular? That's why they're putting I, the popular acts more? I just think that it, it has to do with the promoters and with the public. The public has gotten complacent with the same thing. And especially mm. now after the... Um, uh, after the pandemic, everybody want to go out and just go in there, go anywhere. Right. But then just let me keep it a bug, too. OK, there 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 are people that are fans of the groups like us, mm -hmm. but they don't think we will put asses in the seats. Mm -hmm. But if you bring me to a club down here where two days ago these niggas just got shot up at, ain't nobody coming on Saturday or Ooh. Sunday to see us, period. You got to book us in theaters, you know, Vegas lounges, mm -hmm. different stuff like that. And people will come. It's been proven. You got to check the stats. And, and you know, they, they the fans don't think it'll work. Uh, they, they fans and they do it and then it don't work out and then they blame us because it didn't work out. No, half the town said they didn't know we was coming. Mm -hmm. Or then you got the ones that just ain't really, they just won't do it. Mm. You know, period. That's what it is. So, you know, and then the people, like I said, the people have gotten complacent, man. What, what, what the public allows to get past today would have never floated back really? in the day. Really? Hell no. Cats out there singing with their lead tracks. What? Oh, what? Cats rapping over their truck. Well, rappers always did that too right. sometimes, but you coming out there and you, uh, but you singing over top of it and it's playing behind you. No, no that's right. I saw Jay Z on the uh, 20th anniversary of, uh, of uh, So So Death. He came out and Nabs was playing the record and they had his vocals on. I'm like, I'm on stage. And he was like, nah, not that. I don't, uh -uh. I don't, I don't, I don't do the lyrics. Uh -uh. And he did it again. He said, nah. He said, yo, if you're going to play the lyrics, you might as well just put my picture up here and play the song. Right. Ooh, no, that's right. that, and that's what it is. That's real. I don't believe in that, man. Gerald and Eddie, man, I, I'm, I, they used to make us practice for like 11 hours a day, man. And, and we all we had was water. We got a little small time to go break and get food. But they, they would come in there and Eddie would be like, man, that's bullshit. That's bullshit, man. What the fuck is that? You got to take her hand and you, you bring her to you and you tell her this and, and then you sing to her. And, and that's how you do it. But what you guys are doing is bullshit. Mm. So then another time we were in, uh, we did the Circle City Classic. I just saw somebody posting online the other day where we sang at the... Um, where the Colts played at the Dome, right, 60,000 right, right, people. Right, uh -huh. But Lucas. the night before we had did um, Sherry Carter, it was us, C.C. Peniston, and we was dancing around, and I got so damn tired, and I couldn't keep going. I was singing, but I was, <sighs> right. he, he, we got off stage, he said, man, you're too fucking fat, man. 
He said, stop. Yeah, you're too yeah, fucking fat, that, right? man. Right. You, you guys don't need to fucking dance. They need to hear your voices, man. That's how I talk. You're too fucking fat, man. Just just, just dance on the on the choruses, man. Don't fucking dance the whole song. You're too fucking fat. Man, they need to hear your voices, man. Yeah, man. They was hard. Wow. People uh, don't right. get that right. type of tutelage now. No, right. They don't get it. And, wow. and that's why I was like that. But the public has allowed them to just say, hey, man, it goes some dog shit. And right, 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 and right. they be like, right. oh, wow, that's right. fantastic. Well, well, I understand it. And here's the funny thing about because I feel about that sometimes with stand-up comedy. Sometimes people go see comedy shows, and it's like they've accepted the low bar, not clever material stuff. You know, I try to write, you know, you know. Uh, yeah. Callbacks, all kind of metaphors. I try to, I try to make a flip. You know, I, I really, I'm really, I really care about my act. You're a really, genius but, with it, but man. But I've seen people just go up there and accepted it. And if I comment on it, like you just mad, you just hate, and I'm like, okay, that's what you want to right. say. How can but, you I know, hate? How can well, you hate with all the success you've had? Uh, what they just want to, they, they want to find some because of, you know. And I get it, you know, it's about asses and seats, but it's to the point where these promoters and the comedy club owners, I get it, it's a business. So I have to find a way to make myself more relevant. So people can come see me more because they're not like I said. The club owners are gonna say, "Who packing them in?" If I got the joke recently. It could be about fart man. You know, dude walking around farting on people and laughing, running and shit. People are like, I want to see fart man. He funny as hell. He come to a comedy club and be sold out. Yeah. So they want to see fart man. Now after ten minutes, they're like, he not funny. Well, he got he got your twenty five dollars. Yeah, Someone yeah, is sold I, out. I seen, Whatever. I, you get what I'm saying? I saw a dude that's huge, and I'm not I'm not gonna right. say his name, but. Lord have mercy. Yeah. He, he funny as fuck on what's name, but I watched his comedy special and yeah. it, and I and I love him and I right. it's just not wasn't funny and I'm like right. damn. Right, sure. But, uh, you know, sure. but that, you know the keeping relevant part, man. You know that's why I, I, I do group stuff, I do solo stuff, I host events. I'm uh, I'm, I'm starting a, a foundation called Eat Your Heart Out, man. Why I focus on childhood obesity and uh, teenage mental health. Uh, I have a friend that has this app where. It focuses on that, and she she came on my radio show, mm -hmm. and she said last year was fifty one thousand suicides from the age of thirteen to twenty six. Wow! But over a million attempts, and I'm like, damn, that broke my heart to hear that, man. Why in the fuck at thirteen? At thirteen, I was thinking about getting ready to stick. You know what I'm saying? Playing uh, football, playing video games. But social media. It, yeah, I know. I'm saying, what it is. but 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 why have we we have to figure out how to detour that? You know what I mean? I know I can't solve it all. Right, but, but you can have somebody. I, I'm, right. I'm gonna go and try to like with my organization. Like I'm not gonna be like these cancers. So well, you never know where the money going. I'm directly putting money in families' hands. You got a you got a kid that's obese that need clothes. Boom. Y'all have never had healthy eating. Let me buy you a cart of groceries. Uh, let me teach y'all. If you only got two pair of pants and two shirts, wash them. Make sure it's clean. Let me show you how to right. read the labels and see what 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 you're eating and what's you know what's it doing to your body. You know what I mean? And sometimes eating healthy and being healthy, it ain't it ain't cheap, man. Sure. You know, and I and I've been wanting to do this, but at 400 pounds, what could I tell the kid? That's Right. What could I say? I've been I'm in the tools for the first time since high school. How how, how did you lose weight? What what made you what made you do it and how'd you do it? Sex, man. No, oh. <laughs> no, I uh man, yeah. I got tired of uh, you know, just being this way. And I have you, you know, last time I was on your thing, I was on the cane, man, and right. uh, I'm still on it, but I got nerve damage from the hip and it was like, well if you lose weight, you will uh you will get you. It'll make it easier to walk. This shit, right. man. I, it, it's it's a little easier, but it ain't that much easier. Right, sure. Um, you know, as far as like how I lost it, uh, I fucked with the shots, and and I changed my my lifestyle. Fuck with the shots. What do you mean? The, the weight lift, weight loss shots? Yeah, weight loss shots. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I did. I did. Um, years ago, I had the gastric, and I had lost two hundred some pounds with that. Then I gained, oh. like 80, 90 pounds back. Right. But I like I was I was like at five twenty five. But then I stayed at like four, then I got down to like three something, and then it kept going up, and then I got down to three something, and I was like, F that. And I never had any problems with uh, uh, health and stuff like that. I never right. was in the danger zone for diabetes, cholesterol, right. or high blood. Then one day I came home off the road, we on the West Coast, I come home, and I, I'm walking to the car, and I'm like, uh, I was like, what the fuck? Lose your breath. I was like, I couldn't breathe. Lose I was like, breath. what the fuck? So I went home. Normally, if I feel something like that, it's because I, I party too hard. I was drinking, smoking. I get on the plane, sweating, and all that dry air and all the germs get in you, and you get like a, a little whatever. But, you know, I went to every doctor. Because I'm a black man. I go to the doctor. Right, I'm there like, you go. put that glove on and check out that yeah, prostate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I invite you, For brother. the fourth time this month. Yeah, right, exactly. Right, 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 right. <laughs> And uh, they told me I had something going on with my heart, man. It was, uh, it, and I, it's back to normal now, but yeah. it was like part of my heart wasn't producing the blood the way it was supposed to at a high enough rate. Right. So, you know, I'm, I'm back to normal L now. Okay, let me ask you, uh, how much lower do you want, how much more pounds do you want to lose? 
About another 40. Another 40? Yeah. All right, you want to tell me how much you weigh now? So I went from, I'm in 295. You're 295 now. From 420 something. Damn, another person, okay. Yeah. So you want to get about, about 240? I want to get about 250. About 250, okay. Because yeah, yeah. what I look at, here's the thing. You know, some people are just built to be a little bit thicker. Let's be yeah. real. I don't, it looks weird when you lose all that. If you got, if you got down to 160 pounds, that shit looks horrible. I you know look, what I'm saying? I look dead on Yeah, feet. exactly. Your face is still full. It still looks normal like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I like can see Mark maybe. Like Mark Lawrence head spread out. Yeah, yeah. But I think he got, he got, he got, he got, he got like, what do you got? Thyroid Kidney. or kilo or something? He, got paper, he might have something. like right. his head's but, but you, you know what I'm saying? You look normal. You look better now than you did when you was younger, you know, before I was big. Yeah. You, know, you had a lion head, nigga, shit, okay? <laughs> you know I mean? Now you got a cougar, you're a little cougar now. Yeah. But no, the point I'm making is, yeah, yeah, it's okay to be like, you know, 250, as long as you're healthy or whatever, yeah. okay, and it looks right on you. Yeah. But, but but those people who try to lose too much weight, it looks, you know, it doesn't look good and yeah, stuff like that. You know, so and, good. You know they, they, they do all this stuff, and it's like it's the, these things are not for everybody. Diets, right. shots, you know, even, even being vegan and all kinds of right. stuff, it's not for everybody. Right. The, the thing about it, everybody, they, they see all these, why do I keep doing this? You find all these fads, and then you want to dive into it. Right, sure. It, it's not for everybody. Right, sure. And, and, if, and, and then here's some advice. If you're, if you're doing, if you are taking those shots, they say you don't have to change your diet. You do. Mm -hmm. You have to change it up. If you don't change your diet, you're going to make yourself sick. Right. You have to change your diet. But I've been on that for years, though. I just didn't lose weight. I would go up, down, up, down. Right. What is your one food weakness, boy? You can't, you can't, you just can't stop it. Pussy. No. Um, Nigga, if you don't get a body. Yeah, no, nah, pussy. <laughs> no, all right. Nah, that's thick. Uh, <laughs> what <laughs> that thing? I can't stop eating. Woo! Uh, crackers. Really? Yeah, crackers. What kind? Crackers. Oh, salty, salty crackers or steak. Crackers or steak? Yeah. I, I like Ritz and shit, but okay. I like I like lunch meat. Like my 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 weakness snack is crackers and lunch meat with cheese. Okay. Yeah, my wife has a uh, a, a charcuterie business called Gouda Love It. Gouda and we Love like it, level yeah. one wine certified through Napa Valley. You know nice. what I mean? So. Uh, she doing that out there. I throw you a plug, shorty. No, they, they, no this is all me good. Alone when I get home. Nah, <laughs> nah, I love it. Here, man, what I do different than some some podcasts, I actually give out some gifts. That's what's up. I ain't no hater. So this is all black on stuff. I want you to pull it out, look at it, and we'll talk about it real quick and stuff. Go pull out all the stuff and then go grab it. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, come on. Even goodies in there, man. Hell come on. Yeah. First of all, ooh, that book right there is a hot book right there. It's called My 100. Homies, homies and phonies, phonies of where Hollywood. Hollywood. So wow. all the celebrities I met, a hundred celebrities who was cool, who was crazy. Each chapter is a person. I'm gonna have that book on sale because people have been asking for I'm it. I'm gonna read this. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. You go, because you go I have it. stories like that too. I, of course you do. There's some fake Look mother. Whoop, out there. There. Look yeah, at that I'm shirt. I want my people to wear my shirt. So that makes what? I give them to the size. What size that thing say right there, Three boy? X. Three X. Uh, and what you wear? Three X. Man, come on, man. So you're gonna represent that? You're gonna wear I'm gonna that one day? I'm gonna put it on. I'm gonna make a post. Oh, but come on, man. The love. That's what I'm, I do. I'm gonna tear up, man. I'll be, here. I'll be getting cast to send me, send me stuff, and I don't, okay. even, you know, I don't even charge my doing. That's that's your do rag. Well, you don't need a do rag. Nah. And shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get your wife or something. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a little do rag. My, my, my there you go. Wife. My picture yeah, on it. My what else cup. we got? It? A come on, official. There it is, all day right there. A panic room. I'll have those on sale soon too. You know, my folks been wanting that. There you go. There you go. Yes, indeed. Okay. I put some in it and drink out of it. All right. I got my t-shirt on and the do rag. Oh wow. That's, that's, <laughs> well, okay. There you go. Yeah, man. Bomba ra. Let, let, let Thank me. You, sir. Yeah, no cards in there. If there are no cards, I'm gonna give you some cards. No, no cards, bro. Man, yeah. Okay, this right here is uh, from um, Comedy Hype. You can get it. Uh, we can want to put the name down the bottom. If you can give me the name of it, but you can get the, uh, these Comedy Hype uh, cards. They're like Uno, but they're black and they're about black sitcoms, movies, anything comedy wise. You can play. It's like a guessing game with your family. Oh, so when you sit around the yeah. table, you pull it out, you you play, you get your card. They're good, and whoever you know gets the right answers. So support this right here on Comedy Hype, and we'll have the, uh, the label and everything there. So catch that right there too. That's brother. dope, man. Man, Mr. We Dave Tolliver. Yeah, man. I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me, brother, on the Thanks Panic Room, man. For real. No, for real, bro. You have a hell of stories, man. Man. Now, you're example exactly what I want to talk to people from the 90s who had their thing. And you know what? They still relevant. They still moving and grooving, man. You know what I'm saying? We still doing it. We out here doing it, man. Yeah. And the respect of the stuff you've been through to be where you are still today. Yeah, man. Come on, son, man. You I know what I'm saying? It. Yeah, man. It's uh, We out here, son. We out here. And there, there it is. Tell your folks where they can reach you at, man. Your social media right there. So, yo, you can follow me at Dave Minute Large on everything. Dave Minute Large on, you know, IG, Twitter, or X, whatever it's called. Threads, everything at Dave Minute Large, uh, Dave Tolliver on Facebook. I, I do talk back. You talk to me, I talk back. And make sure you check me out on my radio show with my girl Shatan Latique, my DJs uh, Deuce and DJ Cochise. 
Uh, it's on Spotify. It's called Party and Bull-ish. Party go. and Bull-ish, because I'm tired of editing it, man. But so just Party you. and Bull-ish, man. We on there. It's there on, it is, it's on man. 35 other stations, too, but you can get it on Spotify. Show them some love for the one on Mr. Dave Tolliver. Come on. Party Show them some love. love. There you go, man. Yeah. Thank y'all. Again, another dope episode. Thank y'all for watching. Stay in tune, for, tune with this man. Like I said, Dave Tolliver, man, that had a hell of a career. Still has a hell of a one. Support the brother. Thank y'all for watching Pierre's Panic Room like y'all do every week. I appreciate that. Hit that notification bell or the uh, subscription button or whatever it is. Just hit it and follow, man. Keep following. Keep showing me the love. Check out my movie, Slice 1 and 2 on Tubi. Slice 1 and 2. I wrote, produced, and directed it, man. It's a funny horror comedy. It's a horror comedy, man. I might have put you in a movie. Tonight. You gonna watch it tonight? Yeah, I want to be in the movie, too. Yeah, yeah since you are. Yeah, ooh, ooh. It's a serial killer going around killing folks. Let's do it. You might be next, man. You might be the first victim, man. I might kick you the first. There you go. I might kick you the first victim, man. Again, thank y'all so much, man. I'll holler at y'all again, man. Thank you for watching PS Panther. <laughs> What up, it's your man Dave Tolliver from the legendary Men at Large. You know what? I just survived Pierre's yeah. panic room. Damn it! Yeah. If you like that show, like, subscribe, and comment below, you know, hit the, hit the notification bell, hit the subscribe button, man. We want you around. Appreciate it. Yo, what's up, man? Please go out there and support my new movie called Slice. It's on Tubi, y'all. Watch it. Slice. It's funny. It's a horror comedy. And guess what? We killed a white man first. Okay? No, we go first. We <laughs> kill him first. All right, y'all. Check out Slice on Tubi. Thank you so much.